Good evening, everyone. Just going to set up a couple of things. I have a two computers set up tonight to try to monitor YouTube on one and processing on the other one. Just take a moment to set that up. We're going to do some listing tonight, just for an hour. See how many I can get up. Again, thanks for joining. It'll just be a moment. I'm setting up a dual monitor system here for this stream. Just want to make sure everything's working. There we go. Alrighty, looks like that's working. So get right to uh, the point this evening. Just going to list some print ads. I had a, I scanned a bunch of them into my computer uh, yesterday and this morning, and I'm just going to try to plow through for an hour or so. And if anybody has any questions or wants to talk, please feel free. I'll be monitoring the chat on my left side. On this monitor, I'll be processing everything on this side. So let me just get right to business here. I'm going to be listing print ads this evening. And the magazine I've selected is a Life magazine from June of 1961. Let me pull up that get started. I use my own template that I've created, and I just continuously process these things. And then just uh, after one is completed, I just do uh, view similar or uh, add similar. I'll show you as I go through it. But this is the first ad we're going to do, which is a Budweiser ad for a six pack. And I just want to check here. Hey, Annie, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Like I was saying earlier, Annie, I'm not sure if you're on, but I'm just going to basically, oh, good, you're pop. Okay, great. You're listening too, so we'll have a listening party here. I'm listening to some print ads tonight. I'm going to see more or less an hour. I'll probably stay on until about 7, 7, 10, something like that. It's 6.03 here. Uh, I'm just going to list some print ads and see how many I can get up there. And in the you know, while I'm doing it, if anybody wants to take a look and uh, get an idea about how to process these, I have a whole video series on vintage print ads, which I've linked, I believe, at the top. Hey, CJ. Thanks for joining. You haven't missed anything yet. I'm just getting everything set up. But uh, like I've said a couple times, I'm just going to do some listing tonight for about an hour, and we'll see how many ads we can get up in an hour's time. This first one I've selected is a Budweiser. I hope you can see that. I think you can. A uh, Budweiser ad with a blonde woman. It says, pick pair, take home two six packs of Bud. Let's go, kind of go through. I pulled this picture in from one of my scans. And we'll kind of just go through the listing piece by piece. And I'll show you what I do. The first part of all of my titles is always going to be the year. So in this case, it's 61. Finish print ad is a constant. So the next thing I'm going to do for this one is we're going to put Budweiser. And as soon as I do that, I go down to this section, category section. I'll hit change category. And eBay will pick based upon the words that you have up there in your title so far, which is pretty limited, but it gets the point across. It'll pick a category that it believes this listing should go into. In this case, this is perfect. You see the first one is collectibles. I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Brewerriana beer advertising print. That's exactly what this is. It's a beer print ad. So I'm going to select that. And that gets us set up correctly in the right category, which is very important. <laughs> Miscellaneous, huh? So it could be a bit of anything, I guess. Hodgepodge. All right, so we have that piece, right? We have the beginning of the title. We have uh, L168. There's an inventory video I just did. Basically, this means this is the 168th Life magazine that I've ripped apart and I'm listing this evening. Each one of those magazines usually has between... 10 or 15 on the low end, up to 25 or 30 ads in each one. So that gives you a, a rough idea how many ads we have up, or how many ads we've listed anyway. We've sold a ton of them, too. So this is L168. That's just for my own reference, so I can find this ad when it sells. We've already decided that the category is going to be this bio category, advertising print. Now we go down to this section, which is my personal eBay store categories. I've set up a whole bunch of them. For this one, uh, the first one's going to be print ads, and I'm going to go to beverage. 
We're right there, beverage ads. And the second category, and I'm sorry, I'm looking past my phone here, which I'm using as a camera, uh, 1960s print ads. This is 61, so it's the 60s. And that's where they're going to land in my store, under beverages, and then secondary um, category is going to be 60s print ads. I always put used for the condition, even though, I mean, theoretically, it hasn't been used. It's just a magazine. I'm sure it's been read over time. But again, I'm not going to put new because they're not pristine, but they're in pretty good shape, most of the ones I list. So I'm going to put used. And then in this item uh, condition description, excuse me, category, this is just kind of a, a canned thing I always have. Perfect for framing, which makes it marketable because they really do look good framed, especially these Life magazines. They're, uh, I think, the 14 or 15 by 11. Nice size ad. They look great. This would look really cool in somebody's uh, lounge or a bar area. Uh, so I put perfect for framing and light age toning. Age toning is just that brownish hue the paper can take on over time. I always throw that in there. It looks like this picture is pretty clean. You can see the white lettering there. It looks white. It doesn't look brownish. So this, but again, I just kind of have that in there all the time so people know that there's potential that it could be, you know, a little bit brown. So there's the photo again. And, you know, uh, it was funny. I was on, on the Ocean Professional show last night and many other shows, and there was a discussion going around about the amount of photos you need for listings. And it really depends on your listing and what you're putting up. For something like this, I've been doing this for three years now. I never use one the more, more than one photo. These ads, one photo is perfect. It captures the whole thing. And the DPI we use, when you blow it up, you can see it really well. And again, I'm just going to take a quick glance this way to see if you can see when I blow it up or not. Because I think technically that opens a different screen. Yep, there you go. You see that? It's really high res. So there's no reason to take another picture of this. I mean, I guess I could possibly maybe blow up a portion of it. But I've never had any problem. I put one picture, which makes it even more efficient and fast to list. So that's the photo part, just one picture. And you can see eBay goes in and adds some item specifics, again, based upon what you've input in your title and other parameters. But in this case, yes, the brand is definitely Budweiser. It's not modified. I haven't modified this piece of paper in any way. Country is always United States for Life magazine and most of the magazines I list. The theme, and again, it, this is all pre-populated, which is great. I have Brewer Rihanna again and slash beer. That's the category. So that takes care of all the item specifics I need to list the front ads at least in this category. Every category is going to have its own set of specifics that you need to complete, but this one's pretty simple. All right, now that I have that, let's go back up and finish this title. You know, we have the very bare bone basics, the year, the brand, uh, it's beer, and it's a vintage print ad, but that's not going to get it done. We still have 43 characters to play with. I can't say I'm always going to fill, excuse me, I think there's a mosquito buzzing around. It was a little warmer out today, and I think the bugs are starting to come out for spring. But, um, we have a lot of room to play with. We have 43 more characters, and I'm not always able to fill the entire thing on uh, the entire column in, but I try. I try to get as many as I can. Ugh, Winter Crow, we'll let it slide this time, okay? Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Um, let's take a look at the photo and see if anything jumps out, and this is where I really welcome. If anybody has any suggestions or ideas for some keywords, let me know. I'll show you what I do, but I'm always open for suggestions. Full color, yes, ma'am. This is a full color ad. I think I just blew it up here. That's what we're listing first. All right, so, you know, pick a pair is their little slogan for this. It's Budweiser six pack, right? So let's just start with that. We'll, we'll put in their little slogan, pick a pair. We know it's a six pack. Take home two six packs. And you see how they spell pack, P-A-K? I guess that's just a little fun wording that Budweiser did. So let's mirror that. Um, see how far we can get take home two six hope if I can spell. uh cj almost all of my ads are usually 400 sometimes 600 but 400 seems to be fine so that's what i use 400 dpi um the life magazine if you if you guys watch i think most of you have you watched uh, the listing portion of that video series I'm doing. I think I showed everybody my smaller printer, my uh, Epson ES400. That's good for, I think, about eight and a half or nine inch maximum wide. Uh, the, the Life magazines are wider than that, so I use a big flatbed scanner for that. I'll get you the name in a moment. I, I linked it in that video. The name escapes right now. Um, I have it down here. It's called a Docs, uh, uh, Plus Tech Optic Slim A3. 
it goes up to 18 inches. So it can accommodate these life magazines easily. And um, that's what I use for the life magazines. And again, usually 400 DPI. Pillbox hat. That's actually, does she have? Yeah, she does. Good one, Annie. I like that. Pillbox. Probably going to have to get rid of some of these. You know what? We'll just do six pack. We'll get rid of X, Pillbox. Um, <laughs> should I do that? You think? I'll just put. How does that read to everybody? Otherwise, it'd be a vintage printed. Pick a pair, six packs, pill, pill box. My goodness, tongue tied here. Six packs, pill box, hat, quad. What do you think? No, um, Winter Crow, that's, um, that's a, an, a print ad. It's a piece of paper, an advertisement from a Life magazine. That's what we we're going to be listing tonight. I have like 25 or so scanned. And I was going to initially be, how fast can I do these? But, you know, since there's people on board and we're going to have a chat, I don't mind at all. We're going through kind of slowly on this first one. But these are all just print ads out of Life Magazine in this case. So they're really nice. Like, like I, what I said before, 14 by 11. And these things sell great. And I have a lot. Of, in fact, I have a Budweiser guy who always seems he's down in St. Louis. Um, he always seems to pounce on whenever I list a Budweiser ad. So I kind of look for those. And he's kind enough to uh, have let me give him a heads up. I'll send him an email. Yes, but is the ad art or photo? Oh, I got you. You mean this specific ad? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a photo. Looks like it might have been touched up a little bit, but that's an actual photo. Yeah, from 61. There's a lot that are artwork or drawn or um, especially the older ones. There's a lot of cartoon kind of graphics. It's so cool in, in a lot of these older magazines, you'll see old comic strips sometimes, like characters from old comic strips will be in a, in a print ad. Um, who's the Borden? There's a cow, Elsie, I think. Elsie the Borden cow is featured a lot. It's, it's really cool to see this stuff. But that is a, uh, yeah, that's a photo. Okay, um, well, that's what I'm going to go with for the title. I appreciate that, Annie, with the pillbox. That's a good call. The old Kennedy thing. Very good. Um, now, again, this is just my verbiage. Everybody can do what they want. I have this kind of set, and I basically repeat it over and over, and I just change some. Like in this case, this is the June 61 issue. So I'm just going to modify that. I give a little description of what these ads are and kind of what they're good for. Again, if you want to kind of borrow this and, and use it as a template for yourself, that's fine. If you want to be creative and come up with your own, that's great too. Um, I use... All of these I do. I don't have. I don't think I have one auction live anymore. I use fixed price. Yep, I'll see the cow and Elm of the bull, right? And that's just one that, that came to mind immediately. But there's a whole bunch. You know, if you go through the years, we have magazines from. I think the earliest I have is like from the mid to late 1890s, um, all the way up to the 70s or 80s. You know, 1970s and 80s. And those early ones, it's amazing. You know how much history you see. I think I mentioned this on a live show once, but I really enjoy just for myself going through these magazines. I love to see technology that was brand new at the time being advertised. Like here, introducing the, I think I said this exactly, but introducing the radio. How cool is that to see what at the time was state of the art technology, the concept of a radio set and you could hear music in your home. It was just, it's so cool to see how they act and how they advertise that stuff. And then later on television and, you know, developments within radio. Um, one of them was like something about now, you know, now they have a, a dial that you can turn to change stations, no more pushing buttons. Like, you know, as each enhancement came along, they would advertise it. That's just so cool to say. You just listed, I'm reading your thing, Annie. Rexel, what are these chocolate boxes? <laughs> Everything sells, right? That's That's the... That's the uh, name of the game. Everything sells. Well, again, just to go through this first one, and then I'll kind of plow through, and we'll just we'll talk. If anybody has any questions or things they want to talk about, feel free. But again, I all of my listings, especially the print ads, are always fixed price. I don't do auctions. My pricing, which is something I encourage everybody to do, is fluid. It's never really constant. Um, depends on times. It depends on trends and marketing. For a while, I've been using this fourteen ninety nine. It seems to be doing well. Now that's for one ad. Right, this one page, one page ad. You'll see later on. I have a couple of the two pages, 
And I usually, depending again on what the product is, I'll usually list about $19.99, sometimes $24.99 for the two pages, which if you think about it is a discount because it really could be 30 bucks for two, right? If it carries through the 14 so a perceived value, as they say. Um, that's my price, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, $14.99. I always allow offers. And again, you know, the, the margin we have on these things is just incredible. I've spoken to that many times, but probably if you broke it down to individual ads, it might not even be a penny, maybe a little more than a penny. These ads, so if somebody offers 12 bucks, 10 bucks, odds are I'll take it, especially if they buy multiples. So we allow offers. Um, I just released a business policies video this morning. I'm sure most of the guys watching this are familiar with business policies, but if you're not, check out the video. Uh, managed payments, the way of the world, we're all doing that now. I have a shipping policy set up specifically for my print ads. It's basically uh, first class. And I will be doing a new video. It's probably going to come out either this weekend or maybe Monday uh, on the shipping portion of the Vintage Print Edge series. So you'll see um, how I ship them, uh, the envelope that they go in and all that kind of stuff. They weigh usually for one with the envelope and everything about seven ounces. So it really, even though it says print ad shipping policy, it's basically just the first class shipping policy. Um, I recently implemented a 60-day money-back guarantee um, with returns. Maybe, I don't know, two, three weeks ago I did that. I keep saying this because I'm jinxing myself. I don't get returns. Thank goodness. We never get returns. So I figured I would stretch it out from 30 to 60 in the interest of possible higher ranking within eBay. I'm not sure if it works or not. Like I said, I'll, I'm going to keep it that way. It really doesn't hurt us. We don't usually ever get a return. I might tweak that if it was something like, clothing or something like that. I'm just talking about the, the print ad arena right now. 60 days is fine. And uh, like I said, hopefully it gives us a little bump in search. And that, here you go with the uh, dimensions. About seven ounces. I can fit, I think, up to 10 or so ads. Or when you see the shipping video, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. I can fit about 10 ads. It's still, you know, a quarter of an inch, maybe thick for 10 ads. And it doesn't bump up the weight much. The individual pieces of paper probably weigh less than an ounce. So I'm still usually, I think with 10 ads, I can just get under that pound threshold and still send them first class. And then, you know, again, see value for a buyer. They see, wow, I could buy seven ads and only pay price, only pay shipping for one. It's great. It's a great, uh, it's a great thing. Um, I personally do use, again, this is up for debate and to each their own, but I'm doing promoted on most of them at 5% because I think as you develop a following, just generally speaking, if you develop a following in a certain area, um, if you're a coin guy, if you're a stamp guy, gal, uh, if you have a lot of popular, you know, a postcard, something like that, and you have a built-in audience that's kind of eager to see your next listing, you probably don't need to use promote it. But for people that don't have that gigantic, you know, don't have um, a following like that yet, I think it really it just makes sense in my business. It's you know, you look at seventy-five cents. 15 bucks i'll take it i'm not going to complain about that i like the feature a lot so that's what i use basically for the ads no fees for this uh let me just go back to the chat i'm sorry let's see when i i have magazines from 1850s wow yeah digest size that's okay though went to crow because you know those little tiny uh those tiny ads which again in one of my video those things sell too even in those those old 1800s ads those little uh or some buggy ads and stuff like that. And uh, what do they call it? Uh, quack medicine ads. All those things sell too. Yes, Danny, I have rigid life-size envelopes. Exactly. And I'll show you, but uh, it'll be, I'll have a, li um, what do you call it? a link at the bottom of that video when I, when I release it. But yeah, they're like um, the non-bendable envelopes. Probably, hang on, let me grab one. Give me one second. I'll grab one so I can show everybody. All right, here we go. Let's see if everybody can see that. I'll wait for the feed to catch up. But this is, um, I think it's 14 by 12. And these will fit every magazine I have. I have slightly smaller ones that I'll use for like McCall's or, you know, some, I'm sorry, probably muffled. I have smaller ones of the same version 
that I can fit like a McCall's magazine in. These things are really, really durable. Just uh, cardboard. They have a little tab here that you can pull off and glue closed. And that's what I use for all the Life magazines. And then before I put them in there, I have a clear bag that I seal them in just to keep moisture out, obviously. But again, there'll be a whole video about that coming out. Eight and a half by 11. Yeah. Yeah. You if you're going to sell something that large, Annie, you definitely want to get the, these that I have. Um, and again, I'll have a link for it. I could even send you one if you want. I'll put it in the chat where I get them. I'm sorry about the scratchy the chair squeaking. Need some WD-40. Yeah. Let me check out. I'll get a link for you guys for these um, the mailers. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Yeah, I ordered, um, I think, 500 of them on December 20th. They're 12 and 3 quarter by 15 inch. And uh, here we go. I'll throw a link in there for everybody, just in case you're interested. Doesn't mean you have to buy this one. I certainly get nothing for it, but I just figured it would be uh, helpful to people. There you go. That's the link I just put in the chat. Let me know when it pops up, please. Want to grow? Check out the link. <laughs> there you go. It's popped in, everybody. Um, yeah, it's not automated, Andy. Like I know, like the other ones where you can just feed them in. I, it's not that big of a deal. It takes a little longer, but again, the quality to me it just outweighs any potential pain in the neck. I don't want to be lazy with these things. I try to really give you know the best the best photo. Since I'm only doing one photo, I mean, come on, got to scan it, right? Okay, well, this one, again, if we just want to revisit from the top really fast, and then I'll start plowing through some more, and we'll, we'll still discuss everything, because it's, it's a nice variety of ads that I selected from this magazine, too. So we have our title, a bunch of keywords, only two characters left, not bad. Uh, we discussed the custom label field. Uh, we have it in the advertising, print, beer category. Looks like a good category. I have beverage ads, 60s, it's used. Here's my photo. I'll let all my item specifics. Have my sort of canned description area. June 61. We have our pricing in place. So let's list this guy. List that. And this is why it's so fast for me with these. You know, I, I know, um, I think, Annie, I think you did a video about this. Didn't you do a video about postcards? I thought you did. But anyway, postcards are similar where you can just plow through the next scan or something and, you know, scan 100 at a time. And then it's just kind of create similar, create similar, create similar. My Templates are already in place, so I'm just going to hit create similar, and we'll go to the next item. And you'll see how I can, this constants, like I said, print ad is always going to be there, so I'll erase that off. 61 in this case is always going to be there. I get rid of my picture, and I bring a new one. This is just my, let me make sure on the feed that you can see the folder I'm pulling from, because it's a different window. You might not be able to see it. Uh, that's things you can't see. Okay, well, it's just a, a repository. I have all my photos in this. So let me just pull in the next one. What should we do? I also try to keep, like, that's a beer ad, right? So let's see if I have any other beer ads in here. So we'll keep consistent with products, and I don't have to keep changing things back and forth. And I do. This is kind of cool. I've never seen this before. We have IBI Malt Liquor. Am I familiar with that? Newest member of the international family. You guys should see this in a moment. It'll load up. That's what we're going to be listing next. IBI malt liquor. Kind of cool. Let's get this one. So the title, again, consistency, 61. IBI malt liquor. I'm going to leave it in that beer category. Malt liquor beer. I don't think there's a, a malt liquor section. So we're just going to leave it in beer. Um, and you can see just how easy this is. All I'm really going to change now is the brand from Budweiser to this IBI. And Annie's probably already on it, but I don't know if what IBI stands for. It's probably international something. And I might put that in based on how long it is. But there you go. See, I just changed the brand to IBI. Everything else is kind of the same because we're doing a beer ad again. I don't have to change anything in this. I don't have to change anything in my item specifics because it's all the same. You're welcome, Winter Crow. At least that gives you, you know, 
if you don't buy that one specifically, at least you know what you're looking for and you can look for those dimensions and see if you can get a better price, get a better price. But they're really, really effective. Again, never had a return, never had a complaint about shipping. On the contrary, almost all of my feedback always praises the shipping and, you know, sent carefully, blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty cool. It's money well spent. Here you go. I mean, can you get any more simple? You have no idea. Oh. Yeah, I never heard of that either. So it's new to me. Another cool thing about listing is you learn things, which I love to do. So again, everything here is going to be constant. The only thing I'm going to do is add some more keywords in my title, but the basics, as you see, are already done. And if I wasn't talking right now, I'd be getting through this in you know 30 seconds. <laughs> um, so let's, again, look for some keywords. If anybody has any ideas, let me know. It's kind of cool. I think I'm going to try to look up IBI. If I blow this up, which, again, I don't know if you'll be able to see on YouTube. International Breweries, Inc. from Detroit. Let's see if you guys can see when I blow it up. No. It seems like whenever with StreamYard, if you open up another window, I'm sharing the one screen. So if I open another one, you don't see it. But all I did basically was enlarge the photo that you guys see. Um, it says, newest member of the international family, International Breweries, Inc. So let's put, even though we have IBI in there, International to fill in what it means for somebody that might be looking for that uh, brewery. I think I still, I still have a bunch of characters. Um, let's see what other keywords we can find. Looks like this IBI had a, a bunch of different flavors. It says Pale Golden. That's a new addition to the family. Iroquois, Frankenmuth, Silver Bar, Old Dutch, Bavarians, and Tropical Flavors. That's pretty cool. Really nice ad. I've never seen, but all the ads I've done, I've never seen or heard of this IBI. It's kind of cool. Um, I like that mirrored glass in the background, too. I guess I'll put green. I did this in another ad. I'm going to put green glass. Bottle. I'm just going to put green glass. I know green glass unto itself is popular. All right, so that's what we're going to go with for this one. Full color, even though it's obvious from the photo. In your just in your uh, title, you do that one to crow, or in the description. You see, the reason I don't need—I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that at all. There isn't, but there's in the section. This is a beer ad. With certain items, when you get to item specifics, you'll see it says color, and I always put multicolor. Or if it's a black and white ad, which a lot of my ads, especially the older ones, are going to be in black and white. I'll just write black and white in that color, in the specifics. Um, if you wanted to kind of accentuate the fact that it's in color and it's, you know, that makes it more sellable, then that, that's fine with me. Um, I think that's it for this one in the title. Okay. You think that makes it stand out? All right, let's list this one. Really simple. Let's see what else I got. We'll look for another beer slash beverage because I'm already in the beverage section of my store. So again, create similar. Erase off the stuff I want to change in my title. Keep the stuff I'm going to keep. 61. Change my name. All right, let's X out of this. And let's see what else I can find. See if we have any more beer or brewery or beverage. We do have a different type of a beverage. I'll pull that one in. This is a kind of cool ad too. You guys will see it in a moment. Some searches may ask for color rather than black white. Sure. I just don't know if that's, you know, who knows what eBay's item specifics, but I, I figured the point of putting in color versus black and white in the specifics um, would pull in if somebody specifies color ad, black and white ad. I'm not sure. Look at this. Isn't that nice? Seven up. I don't know who would ever put strawberry ice cream in seven up, but... <laughs> Do yourself a flavor. Make a 7-Up float. Is that calling anyone? I can go for a strawberry shake, but I wouldn't put 7-Up in it personally. Yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying. But if they use color in their search, is it only going to pull the title or is it going to pull some of those specifics? I thought the purpose of the specifics was to, you know, when somebody types that stuff, I thought it pulled some information from specifics, but I'm not sure. All right, so this is a 7-Up. Isn't that cute? Yeah, I like that too. 
somebody will buy this. You can, I can almost tell immediately when I'm listing <laughs> which ones are going to go quickly. 7up has a big following. So I, I've said this several times with these beverages. 7up and RC Cola. Huge bolos, as they say. Huge. In fact, have we done this yet? Brace yourself, everybody. I made my own little effect. Everybody has all these gimmicks. I thought I'd make one, too. 7up is... That's right. It's a bolo. Ta -da! <laughs> That's right. Steven Spielberg, eat your heart out. Or whoever, one of those big producers. Um, seven up. Yeah, I like this ad too a lot. This one will sell. It's got so much, so much going for it. It's seven up. The whole ice cream element. The summertime. The paint. Look at the paper straw with the candy stripe, candy cane stripe. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Croc. That took me about a minute to make, but it's kind of cool. It's unique. You see, the thing is, YouTube gets you so many times. If you try to use stuff, I, I've talked to some people about this, other YouTubers too, but you know, you try to incorporate music and things to make your videos a little more exciting when, when topics are dry, especially, right? You want to try to liven them up a little bit. And every time I go out and I search for some sort of quote unquote copyright free music, you wind up getting dinged on eBay. As soon as you submit your video, copyright strike, copyright. And it's always about these little like incidental music pieces. Yeah, that is cool font. I agree totally. So 61, isn't it? Very, very of the time. Another thing I love about these ads. But yeah, so I figured, you know what? If I'm, I'm a musician, I'm going to start making my own music and putting it up. That's what I'm going to do. I'll make my own creative music and then YouTube can just say good job. <laughs> but uh, so I made that little graphic for something fun. Yeah, I like, the, I like the font as well. This will sell quick too. But let's get it up. Um, again, sticking with that formula, right? We're going to go to 7up is the brand. I'm going to put soda. As Winter Crow said, people searching keywords, they might put soda. So it'll pull this up. Um, let's see what else we could find. We definitely want to get the whole ice cream in there. 7up float. You try not to repeat words, obviously, in a title. I think everybody knows that. But it's sometimes difficult with these ads because... You know, the product is 7-Up, and then you'll see, like, their little tagline or whatever. It says, do yourself a flavor, haha, make a 7-Up float. And you see they spelt out 7 this time. So I might do that because it's different than 7-Up. But I try not to put, you know, let's just say Coke. You know, have a Coke and a smile was a slogan. If I have Coca-Cola ad, have a Coke and a smile, it's kind of repetitive, even though Coke is different than Coca-Cola. But you get the drift. I try not to use the same word more than once in a title. Put a little snippet from a song in my old band. There you go. That's right. Do, do you play bass, Annie? Or did you play bass? I think I heard or saw something to that effect that you play. Not to toot my own horn. I could play about 100 instruments. I could play anything I want. So I'll, I'll make something cool for myself. I'm going to make my own little theme song. I'm working on that for a friend too. A theme song. All right. So we have 7 Up Soda Vintage Print Ad. Let's get ice cream in there. Uh, do yourself a flavor. A kazoo <laughs> they can't copyright that right make a seven up float um i'll put ice cream seven up how does that get us with two two to spare again i can't spell though what do you think guys oh you play guitar okay very cool What do we think of that title, everybody? I think it's pretty good. Unless there's a typo in there, I don't say. But that's why Annie's here. She double checks for me. 7 Up Soda Vintage Bread. Do yourself a flavor ice cream 7 Up Float. So the only word repeating is what? Up. But technically, up is all capitalized in the front and it's attached to 7. So I guess it's treated as a different word, right? I think so. Ooh, very important. Let's change that category. Look at this. Advertising, soda, 7-Up, beautiful. They're not always this easy. Sometimes you have to, you know, depending again on the item that you're, you're trying to list, but sometimes you won't find a category and you have to kind of be creative. All right, I got two thumbs. All right, Winter Crow and Annie, agreeing it looks good. Thank you. All right, we're in our 7-Up category. Now, when you switch the category, it's going to switch the item specific. So we're going to have to do a little revamping down here. But you can see, again, eBay will populate the brand for me. Cool. Theme is soda, sure. 
And this is what I was talking about when I crawled the color section. And you might be right. Maybe it needs to be in the title if you really want to accentuate the fact that it's color ad. But I'll just put multicolor there with the hopes, since it's a specific that um, the algorithm or whatever it is that the search algorithm will recognize if somebody puts in seven up color ad, even though I don't have the word color on my title, I like to think it pulls it in because of that specific, but that would be a nice test. But um, original, it's always original. The easy ones that have uh, pre-populated like this, United States, Life Magazines, United States. I haven't come across any foreign magazines yet, but if I do, obviously I'll change it. Excuse me. She is. All right. Uh, data creation. This is 61. Type of advertising. You can see what they, you know, they have sign and sticker pre-populated. This is neither. It is a print ad. That's what I use. It has not been modified. Other than being taken out of a magazine, but the ad itself hasn't been modified. I didn't write a mock or anything like that. Only if you need to use title characters. Oh, I got you. Yeah, to fill space, right? Thank you, Carrie McGowan, <laughs> my lovely wife, showing some support. I appreciate that. Here's a question for everybody out there, especially uh, Winna Crow and Annie, who I know are pros at all this stuff on eBay. Do you know how this, this Gallery Plus thing always, always gets me agitated? Because supposedly if you're in a collectibles category, which this is in, I always heard a couple of years ago, maybe it's changed, that the uh, gallery plus option was free as you see here it says fees may apply and i know every once in a while they'll throw a freebie out hoping you'll use it and forget to unclick it and then they'll keep charging you i've, I've been burnt by that a couple years ago but does anybody know if that's true if uh, collectibles are supposed to be free uh, as far as that gallery plus option because it never comes up on my screen when i'm listing and i don't want to get burnt and I, I don't know what it is it's like a buck each or something ridiculous on top of whatever your listing fee might be so I, I, sh I shy away. I think it would be a nice option for these things. It would, you know, imagine seeing these big old ads. Uh-oh. Hold on. Remove, remove. I need moderators. That's what I need. <laughs> okay, we got rid of it. Um, but does anybody have any input as far as that goes, the, the Gallery Plus option? I don't think I've ever used it. I think... The, especially the life magazines would really benefit, you know, they would pop off the page, but I'm not going to pay a buck a listing for it. That's for sure. But if it's a free option for collectibles, I would like to utilize it. All right. So we have a good title. We have a picture. We have our item specifics are filled out. Our theme is soda. All this is the same. I think it's ready to list. The only thing I will say in addition is like I said before, my pricing isn't always the same. I'll even modify, you know, generally speaking, the one page ads are 14. They're never going to go lower than 14.99, but you'll see later if I, if I get some car ads, um, Campbell soup ads, there's a couple of other ones, even if it's one page, I'll make it 19.99 just because of the popularity of the items and my experience of doing it. I really could have put that Budweiser ad up for 19.99 as well, but, uh, I didn't. But you'll see. This one I'm going to leave, even though I could probably bump this up because it really is an attractive ad. But I'm going to leave it at $14.99. I don't want to be greedy. Um, I think we're good. We're going to list it. Annie, sounds familiar, but you could check it and then see what it does to your fee toll. Yeah, that's true, too. But you see how, like, it's embedded in here, Annie. Like, it says fees may apply. Do you think if I click it, it says may apply, right? It doesn't say will apply. Let's try it. I'll try it once. And if I get charged, you owe me a buck. Only kidding. Let me see. I could always take it off, right? Like you see, you're right. There's no fee calculated yet. All right, we're going to live on the edge here. Let's list it. Because I'll tell you, like I said, that would really benefit me a lot if we could use these uh, larger gallery. I haven't even seen, I don't think I've seen a listing that has that large gallery view. All right, we're going to decrease similar. And just for fun, I'm going to go into... And you won't be able to see this, I'm sorry, but I'm going to go into my live listings and see if it says anything or shows anything larger. If anybody want, wants to look up that listing for me, maybe on your own eBay, and tell me if you see it, um, that large gallery view. I can't tell if that's any bigger than the regular ones. 
Um, if I put an eBay item number in there for you guys, can somebody look at this for me on your own um, eBay screen and tell me if you see anything different? I'm going to put the eBay item number in the comments for everybody. Appreciate if somebody can take a look at that for me. And then if I, I'm going to revise this and see if it shows any fees. That's the uh, eBay item number for the one I just listed. It still says fee zero. All right. Like I said, this is a, if this is true, I, I might just start implementing this. I just don't want to get that eBay surprise bill at the end of the month saying I owe $500 for gallery fees. That's not happening. But right now it doesn't show any fees. All righty. We'll go back to our listing page now. Oh, it's not any? Okay. It's not propagated. It's not propagated. My wife agrees. I don't even know what that means. It's done not been propagated yet. Sorry. <laughs> it's all right. It's an SAT word, honey. Well, anyway, keep that thing on the side. I'll check back later too, but I'm not going to keep it on all my listings, but we tried it for one. Let's see what happens. And now it is time to go on to the next item. Again, you see the pattern here? Erase off the stuff. Keep the stuff. Get rid of the picture. Add a picture. What should we do? Do we have any more beverages while we're in this beverage land? Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, I think that's it for the beverages. Anybody out there like dogs? I like dogs. Let's bring in a puppy. Let's bring in a Scotty. Leave it to Scotty to recognize real value. This is a Frisky's dog food. Didn't find it, and I guess that's why. Yeah, that would explain it, right, Winnicrow? How cute is this guy? You want to talk about an ad that's going to sell again? Bam! Winnicrow likes that. I'll tell you what, I'll make you want it. I won't list it. You could send me an email. I'd be happy to give you one. In fact, let me put that in there, too. If anybody wants to email me... Is where you can reach me. And if seriously, if you're interested in it, let me know when to crow in the email and give me some details. And I would uh I'll gladly send it out to you. Tempted to use this gallery plus thing again. <laughs> but and he said it's not propagated, so yet maybe though all those options haven't been updated either yet. And I could get burnt. List it. Okay. But do you see? I mean, I'm sure everybody out there sees the marketability or something like this. I mean, come on. Scottish Terrier, right? That's what we want to get in there. So there's a, an automatic keyword. Okay, um, let's start working on this one. We have Friskies. Uh, S K I S. I think it's canned dog food. Let me know if you guys think we should put canned dog food or just dog food. And the highlight would be that this is a Scottish Terrier, I believe, right? I might even move that up in the title yeah that's quite i agree totally you could always enhance things i think annie said this too with the before with the blonde and all but you could put you know adorable scottish terrier cute lovable things like that it's supposed to help this one kind of is self-explanatory i think pictures sell the products 99 percent and ebay help it says aller uh, gallery plus free for listings in the collectibles. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know I read that, but I I figured if it was free that when I was doing these listings, instead of saying fees may apply, you would think it would say something like free. <laughs> like it does. Have you guys ever come across that when you're listing something? Every once in a while, they'll give you one free gallery plus item. And Tam hat. Ooh, look at one a crow. What is Tam. I'm using it. Scotty dog. 
Yeah, but I'm, I'm not gonna. I guess I can get rid of canned, right? We'll put Frisky's dog food. Seven up is live. Gallery view works, so it's thank you, CJ. It's it. You see the large, uh, the larger view. A tam is a type of hat. Okay. Is it a, is that a Scottish? I sound so ignorant with this question, but is it a Scottish hat? Is it that pattern that's called tam? Like this? Uh, what would you call that? Almost plaid, or is it just the style of the hat with the little poofy thing on the top? <laughs> the pom pom. Scotty, what do you think? We have room for Scotty Dog. S C O T T I E. But then here we go again. I have dog used twice. Do you think that's uh, so good? And look at that. We fill out the, the whole listing. It's the shape of the hat. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> A little bit torn on this one. But I think we got some winners here. The seven up and this one, I bet you sell really, really fast. It's short for Tam O'Shanta. Ooh. Oh my goodness. From the Scottish Isles, no doubt, Tam O'Shanta. <laughs> or Irish bit, possibly. Oh. All right, let's see. What do we think about this listing, everybody? What do we think about the title? You think I should rearrange any of those words? Does it look really good though, Annie? Or is it like obscenely huge? Honey, you can pull that up now. Everybody's saying it's can you tell me if that picture looks really big? It's in the comments. If you scroll up a little bit, my wife's gonna look too. Actually, I guess I could just look, couldn't I? Let's see. She said the picture is huge because it looks good. Cool. I just put in that number. Yeah. If you put ebay.com and then uh, backslash an ITM backslash and then put that item number in there. Does the picture look huge? And you know what, Annie? Now that it's up, I'm going to go into revise and see if there's a fee. I'm going into it now. Okay. No fee. Matter of fact, I might buy it from you. When do you see the gallery view? Is it the initial photo or do you have to click on it to make it huge? I'm asking Annie. You hover over it. When you hover over it, right? It, it just becomes super large. It's not like the initial photo you see is any bigger, I guess, right? No, I just clicked on the photo and it made it large. Covering my computer doesn't. Dog first. No one cares about the food. <laughs> That's true. We know Frisky's is dog food, right? All right, so I'm going to put Frisky's Scotty Dog. Well, they're fools. All right. Frisky Scotty Dog, Scottish Terrier, and Tam Hat. I love the Tam Hat thing. That was huge. That's something I never would have even thought of. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a product of Carnation. I might throw Carnation in there. Let's see. All right. What do you think, Annie? Frisky's Scotty Dog Vintage Print Ad, Scottish Terrier, and Tam Hat. And I put Carnation, which fills it out perfectly as far as our uh, characters. I kind of dig that. Oh, this is, let's see if this works. But again, remember, we have to change the category, obviously, right? Now, this is interesting because you have collectible, you have a, a Scottish Terrier collectible section, which is intriguing. Let me click that and let's see what they ask for in the item specifics if I select that. Handmade, modified, porcelain, glass, metal. Uh, this is almost implying that it's like a... Sounds good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so we have a Scottish Terrier section, 
we have an advertising pet section, which is where I would usually put it. And that's how my store category is. Let's just fill that in. I have a uh, pets, I think. Don't I have a pets? Dogs, here we go, dogs. Print ads, dogs. 60s. Um, trying to think if I should put it in a Scottish Terrier collectible section. Okay, Annie, perfect. Oh, it blows up without. Excellent. Gotcha. Yeah, you're gonna jump on that. Just let's let's both be careful with watching those fees. Cause what if I, I'm gonna check this like every hour now, just out of paranoia to make sure we don't get charged a buck. Cause it's a nice option, right? To add that. And I'll tell you what. Um, hopefully, you could, I wonder if you could bulk edit that option. Cause I have thousands of these things. Imagine one big bulk edit. I don't. I've never seen that. If you could put a gallery view in there, it's a bulk edit. But I'll 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 search for that. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna try it in the dogs scottish terrier section because that's the group we're going after right dog breed scottish terrier animal class dog united states handmade no i'm thinking modified no material paper type poster print we'll go with that that's a print look at that thank you annie yeah that's because of the scanner you know I try it really provides a good resolution and I'm sure you know this because I saw your video about the removing the white like I did I also go in sometimes and I'll you know it depends on the head you can go in and modify the image a little bit just to enhance certain things like make it more colorful if it's a little faded but I try not to tamper with it too much because then you don't want somebody to think they were going to get this and then they get this sheet of paper and go what is this so I, I try to keep it as original as possible but there are on certain occasions especially the black and white ads um I'll use a filter and just actually add black and white to the black and white. And it really makes it sharper. The definition is better on some of those, especially like the twenties and thirties ads that are a little duller generally. But, uh, that's what we're going to go for, for this one. This is, uh, my first time doing this as far as a Scottish Terrier collectible, but I'll let you know, I bet you this sells really, really fast. I'm going to, we're going to, what the heck, we'll go for the large photo again, but I'm not going to make this a habit because I know I'm going to get a, $500 bill at the end of the month. I'm not going to be happy. All right. I think this one's good to list. If everybody agrees. Yeah, let's do it. I really appreciate the feedback, everybody. This is very helpful. It makes it much more fun. How are you doing with your listing, Annie? All right. We'll do create similar. We know the drill, right? Let's get rid of all this extra stuff. <laughs> you sure you don't want it? I would have given it to you. Oh, yeah, is that right? I don't know. That 20s and 30s greeting cards. Okay. They were just in vogue. All right, let's see what else we got. Do we have any other pets? Got some cool ads. This is a nice, I'll tell you, um, with Life, the first Life magazine was 1936. Which is, you know, old, but it's not ancient. It's certainly not like the uh, the 1800s as, and especially uh, Winter Crochet said she had, what, 1850s? But it's old enough that um, the ads themselves, like you could see the evolution of how they incorporated ads into the magazine. Those first few magazines, I mean, they were probably maybe 100 pages. They weren't very thick. And there was maybe five or six ads in the whole magazine. And it's incredible, as you see, as time goes on, how much more advertising was put. So these very early 60s ads I like. I don't like the later ones. That They're just they're much more modern to me. I know it sounds silly, but they're not that old, really. They're my age or a little younger than me. And some of the stuff is just, it looks too contemporary, with exceptions. The car ads and stuff look really cool. But like my my sweet spot for these ads is 30s, 40s, and into the 50s. Because 50s is full color and very um almost gimmicky that that typeface that you like to want to crow with the ice cream ad that that almost looks more 50s and 60s but um if you guys are familiar with like 101 dalmatians is 60 or 61 that kind of font i love that stuff and the 40s ads are fantastic another bolo i'm not gonna hit the button but another bolo all those 40s ads at world war ii era ads just put ww2 in every single listing that you know it applies to and they sell really really well yeah, there is Frisky's cat food. Absolutely. 
You're doing pretty well. You listed a few. Okay. Wow, you're all over the board. That was in the miscellaneous, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. Piano and organ advertising. Yeah. You weren't selling them then. Oh, boy. Did you just collect the magazines or were you, were you just flipping the magazines as a whole instead of ripping them apart? All right. What should we move on to? We, I'll give you some choices. We have food. We have car. Um, what else do we have? Home goods. Hey, Audie, Mike. 40s and 50s ads have celebrities. Absolutely. And 30s, too. Um, that's in one of my videos. I have a nice Groucho Marx ad from, I think it's from 47. But you're right. So many celebrities would, you know, endorse. A, Bing says, I only smoke camels. You know, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of Bing Crosby ads. And Audie Mike, I just want to say thank you. What a beautiful comment you left earlier. I really, really took that one to heart that you said that uh, you appreciate the content. I appreciate that very much. It's encouraging. Makes you want to do more and more. Victorian reenactments. Oh, that's so cool. All right, Audie Mike wants to see some car ads. All right, let's pull in a car ad. We'll pull in the first one. Um, knock on wood, not, not a huge drop off. I mean, I think like everybody, there's been a little bit of a slowdown, but it hasn't been crippling yet. Hopefully it doesn't become that, but let's go to the car ad. I just picked one. This is a 61 Rambler. Lots to talk about in this one. First of all, car ads sell as a general rule, car ads sell people like cars um you can see this one look at this car you have sailboat you have some kind of cartoon down here you have all kinds of things we could pull from so let's go with the car ad again we're going to put the rambler now with car ads as far as going to the all important category section as soon as i put rambler in i'm going to hit this and look at that. You have collectibles, advertising, automobiles, American Rambler. Most of these car companies will have their own section. Again, that's ideal. You want people that are into Ramblers to find your ad in a Rambler section. So that's very cool. How do you get out of second gear? I'm not sure, Joe. All right. Um, again, that the basics are taken care of. Let's get the right categories. Mine is called automobiles. We have the picture. Let's fill out some specifics, which again, a lot of them pre-populate, which is very cool. It is a print ad. It is a Rambler. It is an original. Color. I always put multicolor because to me, this the color, I'm not going to put, I guess is if you find a pink Cadillac ad, I would write pink. Um, but most of the time, I'm just going to put multicolor. Obviously, the ad has, even though red looks like the dominant color, I guess, if you just look quickly, obviously, it has lots of different colors. So I put multicolor on everything. That's uh, 1961. 61. This is interesting. If you see on car ads, you'll see date of creation, date of origin. A lot of times, like just like now, right? If you get late in a model year, if it's September, October of this year, they'll be advertising next year's cars. I have that all the time. I'll have a 1959 ad, you know, from 59, but it'll say introducing the all new 60 Pontiac. And I think that's what this is for is like one of them you should say is the ad, but the origin is... So like in that case I just described, I'd probably put 59 as creation because it's a proper 59 ad, but the origin is going to be for a 1960 vehicle. That's so cool. Winter Crow, is that what your, uh, that reenactment, your your photo that you use, your, um, what is it called? Your little icon for yourself on YouTube. That looks like, is that one of those outfits? Is that one of the recreations? Is that a photo from it? Modified, no. United States. Theme, automobiles. Country, United States. It's so cool that most of these things fill out. You can see car ads obviously have a lot more specifics to fill out. And I always, again, we're talking, right? Normally, if I was by myself and just listening to these things, I would plow through it. I'm used to doing these. However, profile pick. Thank you. I couldn't think of the word. <laughs> profile pick. Um, 
you know, I'm used to these, so I know what to fill out, but you, I'd rather spend the time. It doesn't take long to fill in these particulars than get those stupid uh, e eBay emails or notifications every once in a while that you need to fill out the following specifics. To me, it's, it's, it just takes another minute. You know what I mean? It's less aggravation. Artie Mike, in the headline, do you specify magazine and issue? Not in the, in the headline, you mean the title? I don't put it in, I'll put the year in the title. I'm sorry, I know you just joined Audio Mike. We were talking about this in the beginning. There's a couple of constants that I just do personally. Again, everybody do what you want to do, but I'll always start my listing with the year that the magazine's from. In this case, it's 61. And then this verbiage vintage print ad I have in all of them. And then I have kind of a format. Well, I'll start with 61, then I'll put the product, the, the brand, right? And then I'll continue with keywords based on the photo. But I try to fill out all this other mandatory stuff first and then go back and... I think that's probably the most creative portion of the whole listing. So I like to tweak that. And it's a lot of fun doing this live with everybody because Annie and Winnicro so far have provided some really good feedback and given me ideas for words, to for keywords in the title. All right, so let's go down to the picture. I think we have all this taken care of, right? Specifics are in. Like I said earlier, car ads, I'm going to bump up to $19.99 because car ads sell. Now let's look at this picture. What are some things that you guys would use for keywords on this thing? Um, it's kind of a vacation theme, I guess. America's newest, sportiest, lowest price, convertible. So it's a convertible. We definitely want to mention convertible. This is another thing where, you know, Andy made a great point. Yep, convertible. Absolutely. Croquet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, convertible is in there. Absolutely. You know, uh, again, people have done this before with other categories, but we're in a category, right? If you look in the category, collectibles, advertising, automobile, we're in the automobile category. So I don't think it's necessary to write Rambler automobile or Rambler. I'm up, I might put car in there, but I think that since the ad is already in, um, you know, that category, it's kind of repetitious and a waste of space in the title. I might throw car in now and then if I have a couple of spaces to kill, but Rambler gets the job done. Sport, yeah. Convertible, there's print ad. Um, maybe it's the sailing thing of a sailboat. They have that a big old oar, <laughs> a wooden oar. Vacation. And I know it reads kind of sporadic when you just throw in these mid-century modern. Yeah, I would have that would be in a, you know virtually everything I list. Anything I guess what's mid-century is 40 through 60s. I guess 50s, 60s. That's going to take up a whole chunk of my. Uh, my inventory here but i know it's a good catchphrase that people like you'd put rambler for a search in the title yeah absolutely that's that that i have first oh you're saying if you were searching right you wouldn't put car necessarily right but convertible definitely in there a key element um i'm gonna put i like sporty because it's actually mentioned it says america's newest sportiest lowest priced so we'll put sporty Oh, I pop a car. Um, I was going to put something with family fun or vacation. MCM from it's okay. Oh, is that cool? Instead of yeah, that's a, a big chunk of my title, right? MCM, that the, the catchphrase. Cool. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, what the heck? We'll try it. Caps like that, right, Annie? Yeah, I believe it. Mike, 14,000 new listings. That's incredible. 46 to 69 okay i think she is i think she is and he probably deserves it too uh let's see <laughs> that's actually very funny you see the little cartoon stuff it's kind of hard to read i can i can blow it up on my side and see if it's a little easier yeah see when i blow this up it's it's 1220 by 1600 so it looks really good um compact car this was considered a compact at the time, so I might put compact. What do you guys think about that? I think that's good. Ramble convertible, sporty compact car. I'm spelling compact? Yes, I am. An O. White wall, yeah. Actually kind of cool. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Thanks for joining. Wow, it's 7 o'clock already. This was supposed to be how much do I do in an hour. I did three. <laughs> Normally, I would probably do 
40 or 50, but that's okay. This is a great conversation. Sporty compact car, white walls. You know what? I like that. Damn. What do you think? Am I missing anything huge? Like, there's no reason to really write vacation or sailing. I, I don't know. Love Massachusetts. Yeah. We play a lot. My band plays, oh, we used to play all the time in Providence. Oh, no, Newport, Rhode Island, which is beautiful, beautiful. Hey, Cap Guy, how are you? You don't need the car after compact. Yeah, you're right. I think cars, like I, I was just saying, if I needed, like, see how I have seven characters left? As a filler, I'll put in something like that. It's obvious it's a car. It's obvious I'm in the, the car category, automobile category. If I think of an, a little six or seven word, six or seven letter word I could throw in there. Let's take a look again. Newport's beautiful, yeah. We uh, And if you're familiar, I'm sure you are, uh, Newport Blues Cafe or something. We used to play there all the time. Very, very nice place. A lot of money in Newport, too. Good clientele. Um, What do you think? We got six six characters to play with here. Chicks. Hey, Tracy. Thanks for joining. We're having fun listing um, print ads. I'm getting all kinds of all kinds of ideas. I'll tell you, I really appreciate this. Hopefully, I'm giving some ideas too. But I really appreciate the feedback. It's fantastic. Um, I don't think there's really much more I could add. Yeah, the yeah those mansions are pretty cool. And I know uh, Kennedy got married there. There's a right up the hill. There's like a hill from that cafe that we played in, and uh, it was the church where Kennedy got married, which is kind of cool. All right, I think that's good. White Walls was a good one. MCM, I just learned, so I'm going to incorporate that where I can. I think that's good. But you see how it's funny? You put White Wall in the title, and now it's asking, prompting me to change. You put NAI, the California prop box. Okay. What's on the ground? That's a great question. What is that? It looks like a twisted piece of paper or something. Let me see if I blow it up, if I can tell what it is. Yeah, that is odd. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's supposed to be like driftwood or something, I think. <laughs> Absolutely, Annie. Thank you very much. You, you contributed a lot. I really appreciate it. Have a good dinner, and I'll see you soon. I think I might do this, everyone. Yeah, it's. I think it's driftwood too, Gulf Coast Pickers. How you doing? Thanks for joining me. Yeah, what do you play, Eric? Annie's a shredder on guitar. All right, we're going to let that. Driftwood might be kind of, ah, I'm not going to put driftwood. I don't think there's enough space. All right, let's let this one go. But that's a car ad. They're very, uh, they sell really well. They're very, very popular. Like I said, I upped it to 1999 for that one. <laughs> Probably the seatbelts they tore out. No, I think, I think it is uh, driftwood. All right, let's listen to this one. I'll show you. We have a couple of other car ads, I think, in here. So check those out. See so what you guys think. Basing guitar, cool. Me too. I play a lot. I mean, I started on drums, actually. I'm a drummer kind of from birth. My dad was a drummer, and I've been playing drums my whole life. And when I was about 16 or 17, I taught myself guitar. And then, I don't know, shortly thereafter, I started playing bass, which is kind of like... I know people will argue about that, but if you can play guitar, you should be able to play bass, especially if you have good rhythm. And since I'm a drummer, they all kind of go hand in hand. And then in recent years, I picked up keyboards, kind of rudimentary, but enough to get it done in a show, that's for sure. Chords and stuff like that. But music is everything, almost. You can beatbox. <laughs> all right, we're going to go to the next car. Let's see what we have. We'll erase off, like I said before, we'll erase off the things that we going to be changing and we'll keep the stuff that's constant which for the purposes of tonight's exercise is always going to be a 61 vintage print ad well, let's see what we got here some more cool cars we have a two-page car ad but it's only it's in black and white which kind of stinks um uh, you guys want to see a ford truck yeah let's see a ford truck you play the radio there you go can you keep it in tune 
Check this out, guys and gals. The Ford trucks. Look at that red truck. That's kind of crazy. It's like a flatbed in the back, but look at how low it is. If there's any car, guy, car guys out there, let me know. You have played the drums? Okay. <laughs> Just in passing? Or actually, like, professionally played them? Pretty cool. So we have three pickups in this one, Ed. Uh, the Falcon Ranchero. The style side pickup and the Econoline, which is that kind of. <laughs> Aren't they odd looking? I like the top car. I don't like the the second and the third one. Is that that last one? They call it the Econoline. Yeah, I'm not digging that one at all. But it's not for me to say, right? Somebody out there might be looking for this, so we are going to go to the top, and we're going to type Ford. That's where I stop, and I hit category. Bam. Automatically, they have a category for Ford. We'll click on that. You like the red one? It's, it's unique, I'll tell you that. And again, just to get the flow going, we, we went right to the category. We switched it to, up to Ford. We'll go back to the picture and we'll fill in the rest of the title, but we'll get rid of the other stuff that has to be filled in first. It's a print ad. It's a Ford. It's an original. It's a multicolor ad model now there's multiple models you see they prompt you for mustang that's probably the most uh most popular model uh, we'll fill in the stuff that we know are layups here modified no theme automobiles data creation 61 data origin 61 i think these what was it june yeah june 61 so you know that what we were talking about earlier about model years and stuff if it's june a June ad in 1961, the vehicle is going to be a 61, unless it said specifically coming soon, the new 62s, which you see a lot. Um, model, we have a choice. I think Falcon would be the most recognizable model personally. If anybody wants to uh, give the thought on that, I appreciate it. But if you, I don't know if you could see on the bottom left, which is this top vehicle, that's called the Falcon Ranchero compact truck looks like a vehicle to me but apparently that's a truck it's a van that had an excellent <laughs> eric likes the truck too i'm gonna go ranch what do you think i'm gonna go uh falcon as the brand even though it's really technically multiple brands because there's three but for recognition i'll go falcon all right and again all this is going to stay the same so now let's take a look at this photo Three pickups. We want definitely want to put pickup, right? Ford pickup. I'm going to put truck in there, even though it's kind of understood. But again, the category just says automobile. So in this case, I'm going to put truck for model if you only get one choice. Oh, yeah? Just the word truck? I guess that's true because it covers all three of them, right? I just thought Falcon might be the most, of those three, the most recognizable. That's a good idea. Why not? Truck. Turk. <laughs> Um, let's look at the picture again. Three pickups, three costs. Does anybody see anything jumping out at them as far as words we can use in the title and make this guy stand out? Should we put Falcon in there? Maybe I will. Fourth generation F series is trucks from, yeah, I guess that's what this is, Eric. It's a 61. All these ads tonight are from um, June 61. You can, I don't know if you can make it out on YouTube, but. There's a license plate on this blue one, and it says 1961 right on it. Um, I'm going to put Falcon Ranchero. Just in case somebody is looking for that vehicle. I don't know. I'm going to try one to crawl. Let's see. Um, the other, you know, they have the word new. We have Falcon Ranchero, Style Side, and Econoline. I'm sure I could put those two in, right? Style side. And what was this one? Econ O line. Pretty good, right? That gets us almost the whole thing filled. Yep. Falcon Econ O line. Econ line. It says Econ O line, Audi Mike, on the uh, E C O N O L I N E on the ad itself maybe you just maybe just uh mistyped it i'm sorry but yeah i have that in there right we have the three 
Falcon Ranchero style side Econolon. And that gets us just about the whole thing filled. We only have four characters left. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I think that's good with that one. If anybody sees anything glaringly obvious that I've missed, or they think it might be a good idea. Um, for you guys that are coming on a little bit later, we were having a whole debate earlier. <laughs> Annie was very helpful with that. This option right here, display display a large photo and search results with Gallery Plus. Apparently, according to eBay, you're allowed to use this Gallery Plus feature for free if you list in, in uh, collectibles. All these print ads I have are in the collectible category. But because it doesn't say down there free, it says fees may apply. I was always hesitant. I never wanted to pay. I think it's like a dollar per ad or per, you know, per listing for that option. But I had uh, Winnicrow, my wife, and Annie all checked the ad itself. It looks like when you hover it over, you get a really, really huge photo, which I think would be great for marketing these things because they look really you know vibrant and colorful so i'm trying it on a couple and making sure we don't get charged a buck on each one but uh for now i'm going to leave on this handful now i'm going to leave it on and just make sure i don't get charged if i do i'll remove it but it should be free for collectibles i do notice that it's red white and blue you think that's a or is that really like kind of a beige i guess it is red light red white and blue mm -hmm. But I think it's more important to have the the brand of the truck, right, than red, white, and blue. I like the red, white, and blue, though. That angle. All right, we're going to go with this one. List that guy. Taking a while. Okay, Audie Mike. Yeah, just a, a misspell. That's fine. All right, we'll create similar. Do you guys want to see the double car ad? It's a shame it's in black and white, but it's still kind of cool. Or do you want to move on to another uh, another type of ad? Let me know in the comment, please. Yeah, exactly, Audie Mike. Yep, it shows you if there's going to be any fees um, applied to your listing. I'll show you that on the next one. It says fee zero. And it has said that, but I've heard before a lot of people that use that Gallery Plus thing in collectibles, like all of a sudden they'll get a nice surprise from eBay on their monthly bill where like you have a series of, you know, dollar charges out of the blue and I'm listing, you know, four or 500 of these a month probably. And I don't want to bill for 500 bucks for gallery plus I'll, I'll raise a stink and good luck getting your money back. You have to fight them to, <laughs> you want a black and white? You could always put USA. Ah, good call, Tracy. Four trucks built tough, American tough or something. All right, we'll do a black and white for when a crow. Let's pull that one in. Also show you what I mean by a double ad, and there's different types. There's a, a centerfold where the pieces are together, and there's a lot of, but that's very rare. Obviously, that's only going to be one ad. There's a whole bunch of double page ads, but they're usually two separate pages, and I'll show you. I indicate that in my listing. It's very important. I don't want somebody to think it's a fold out or a centerfold if it's not. In this case, this one is not. Oh, I agree totally. There's no art anymore, Tracy, in the cars, right? They're just like cookie cutter looking. All right, this is the double page black and white. I'll blow it up so you guys can see. It's a Chrysler ad. You see the the white thing in the middle, the white stripe? That's just my um, my photo editor. I did it on purpose so that people could see it's two pages. This would be a Chrysler. Let's see, what is it? What kind of car? I love these wings. They look awesome. The bat wing, like the Batmobile. The fins, is that what you call them? We can't be there. I'm not tired. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Somewhere in here, it'll probably say it says it's a okay. We have a we have two different types here. We have a Chrysler Newport, and we have a Valiant. Oh, we have three: a Valiant and a Dodge Dart. So there's our three brands or models. The farther you go in 61. All right, let's take care of the basic stuff. We're going to throw Chrysler up there right away after the year. You will see that eBay. Yeah, the fins, right? I love them too, Eric. I always reminds me of the Batmobile from the TV show. I agree, Tracy. I wish that was in color. The color ads look awesome. I mean, they. And by this point, I think they're just trying to save money. The black and white ads are cheaper. 
I will check that out when a crow. We haven't investigated the photo in few uh, in um, inspected it, you know, thoroughly yet, but we will. Chrysler. Let's go down and fill out some advertising. Is printed Chrysler original black. Here's where I put black and white. Unfortunately, I don't have that. You have to type it. Model, um, which one do you guys think is the most popular model of those three? We have a choice between the, the Dodge Dart, which I remember very well, the Valiant, or what was the other one? The Chrysler Newport. And yes, it looks like there's a poodle back there. Want to crawl? You see him? Little white poodle hanging out. <laughs> Always got to, if there's a dog, right? We already learned this. If there's a dog in the ad, put not only put dog, but if you can, try to put the breed. That's a fact. People collect German Shepherds. People collect Poodles. People collect Scottish Terriers. Yeah, that is a really an awesome looking car. I wonder what color that is. Probably black or dark blue. So what do you guys think as far you like Newport Audi, Mike? You think that's the coolest one? I mean, that's the featured one at the top. The Dodge Dart is at the bottom uh, right here. And then this is the Valiant, which looks a lot, almost like a luxury. V200 two-door hardtop. Plus, you got the convertible angle, which we always want to go with. Newport. All right. I got two Newports. So we're going to go with Newport. Let's throw that in. 61, 61. United States. Not modified. Theme is automobiles. Country is USA. All right. This is the fun part. Let's go back to the picture, and we'll start filling in the title. Well, right away, I'm going to put convertible. I think we all agree that's a very um, good word to use. It's a Chrysler convertible. Should I put fins in there? Is Dodge in the title yet? Hmm. Well, it's Chrysler Newport, Dodge Dart, and is it Chrysler Valiant too? You think I should put um, Chrysler Dodge? Yeah, why not? Oh, a little thing about Dodge that I learned in my 20s ads, they used to be called Dodge Brothers. So I have a bunch of car ads from the 20s that said instead of just Dodge, it was the Dodge Brothers. It's kind of cool. Yes to fins. I agree. Absolutely, Stacey. So we have a Chrysler Dodge convertible vintage print ad. Um, what would you guys have? Fins are in there. We could rearrange this a little bit, but fins. Um, this kind of cool scenic, like mountain view. It almost looks like. Um, maybe I'll put those other two models in there. We have a dot and a valiant. Yeah, the poodle's got to get in there. White walls again. I like that. run out of space though white walls how do we how do we not put the poodle in what's more important i think poodle is more important back when we go cute poodle to be as cheesy as possible look at that zero pulled it in what do we think of this title guys i kind of dig it Just waiting to see if anybody thinks uh, any of these words should go or if we're kind of, we like this title. I think it's good. I like sporty too, but it's one of those cases where like you have to figure out which word you think is the most efficient or the most, you know, the one that's going to market it best. Add car. We were talking about this too earlier. It's already in, you'll take that car in black. I think it is in black. We know it's a car because it's in the automobile category. And I'll put the word car in if I need space, like if I need to fill in, if I had four characters left or five and I just, I would throw in car just to fill the gap. But I think it's kind of implied, obviously, that it's a car. It's not bad advice though, Eric. It's just when I have so many keywords I can use, you know, you like that one across? I think it reads pretty well too. Now, oh, 
let me just show you what I do for this one. It's a two-page ad. So we're going to put the – ooh, in fact, shoot. I'll usually put that right on my title. I have to put that on my title. Um, we're going to go – I always write two-page. Can you read that title? Can't read it in – can you read the title? Can't read <laughs> – your eyes are Victorian. I have 61 Chrysler Dodge convertible two-page vintage print ad, cute poodle fins. And then in the um, item specific, oh, look at this. You could fill all those in if you wanted. Drop vintage. Uh, I never do. I'm not saying you can't, but in favor of what? What would you replace vintage with in this instance? To get white wall in there or something? Because I have models in the description, right? We, we all agreed Newport was the one. Google search would only show what's in title. Oh, so you're saying to put car in because it's, a, it's not an eBay search. It's a Google search, right? What do you think, Winnicrow? What would you replace vintage with? Yeah, I have to put two page. I, I mean, this is again just when I say I have to. I always put two page if it's a two page because it's going to command more money. And I also put over here. I put two separate. They spell separate. I see E I right? pages in bold. An ongoing effort to avoid people saying I thought it was a you know centerfold or whatever. If it is a centerfold, which I do have one of coming up, I'll indicate that it's a centerfold. If it's not, I want everybody to know it's two separate pages that I've artificially combined as far as, you know, for the photo. And again, knock on wood, I've never had an issue. You could already have the date, two page. Yep. So two, I indicate two separate pages here. I indicate two separate pages in my title. And just to be safe, down here where I have each page measures, I'll also write. Uh, also write two page down here. pages each measuring but i'll just do it like that no grammar police right and then this guy i'm bumping all the way to 24.99 which again if you think about my regular one page is 14.99 it's only 10 bucks more it's actually less it would be 30 bucks right if we did uh one page times two so there's a perceived benefit there i have some eric that have the word two and i have some that have the number two and i'm trying to be consistent with my listings and recently i've been doing the two the thing is like what would i vtg i think when a crow that was on don's show the other night somebody i think annie said that um i forgot what the wording is but basically vintage equals vtg for search purposes like they've combined those two into one search i'm pretty sure it's vtg but again what would you guys in lieu of the word vintage, what would you guys put in? What is there something you think I'm missing? Cute poodle fins actually reads really funny, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe I should put convertible fins. Fins are cool. Sneak the cute poodle at the end. But you see, again, the vintage fins, CJ. Instead of vintage print ad, VTG fins. I have to have vintage print ad, though, in my search. Still use VTG, VTG, and then two page is that in title. Look at the picture again, everybody who digs cars. <laughs> that really is kind of cool. Imagine it's probably black, too, right? That looks awesome. Why do they do away with fins? It looks like it's more aerodynamic, doesn't it? You don't need cute. Okay. At the time I put that in, we didn't have a lot of wiggle room, so I wanted to try to fill, but I think you're right, too. A customer's on a laptop or a smartphone. Who knows, Artie Mike? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm always on my... This is a desktop. Um, I know a lot of people do search for items on their phone. 
I personally, it's just, again, a preference thing. It might be because my eyes are becoming quite Victorian as well when a crow. But um, I can't see these stupid – even the phones, they're pretty big, but the pictures look awful on a phone. I'd much rather see a nice big – that's why I'm paying for this Gallery Plus thing. Well, hopefully I'm not paying. That's why I'm putting the uh, Gallery Plus option in so it could be – yeah, the car is awesome. I agree. I'm glad you like it. I was holding off on this one because it was black and white. I wanted to show everybody the uh... – yeah, cute's gone, Tracy. Done. Out of here. Chrysler Dodge Convertible Fins. Two-page vintage printed poodle. What's another word we could use? Um, what did we? What did I take out? I took out one of the, like dot or something. Dot and valiant. Um, I'll tell you, this is the weird thing about getting people online together to to go through listings. Because if it's by myself, <laughs> I put a lot of. I know you like the USA thing. Made in USA. Yeah, all of the, almost all of the car ads I do. Dodge, don't I have Dodge in there? I have Dodge in there, when a crow. Chrysler Dodge convertible, USA. What the heck? I'll go with Tracy's suggestion. We'll throw USA in there. I'm going to fit Mead in, Emily. Mead. I'm um, short one. We'll just go USA. All right. I'm going to go with this one. Car ads sell. I think I've said that 18 times, but they do. But it, it definitely helps, like Eric said, about you know a Google search. USA is a good one. Okay, cool. See, that would be, I'll tell you what, Tracy, the only thing that's, it's not bad, but it would be in 99% of my print ad listings are going to be USA. Like, I guess you want to, especially with vehicles, you want to kind of accentuate that it's USA, right? Like, I'll have Saab ads every once in a while or Volkswagen, and I don't necessarily put Germany or German but down in the um, category section for those, I think it says European model or, or something like that. USA is a good search word. All right. Yeah, if I would, my God, where, where have I been without you, Wanna Crow? It's not a, I know, you're right. Hi, Joe. It's not a Dodge convertible, it's a chrysler convertible chrysler newport but christ but then they have dodge dot down here and they have a valiant which i'm not sure if a valiant is chrysler or dodge i know that is a plymouth i think plymouth valiant plymouth might be a word we should throw in there we have dodge we have chrysler should i put plymouth in but then again look we're, we're sacrificed then usa has to go and everybody's enjoying oh i'd be done i'd be done Everybody gets 10% of the sale pro for anybody that helps me. You get 10%. <laughs> uh, should I put in, what was the last one I just said? Should I put in um, Plymouth? What do you guys think? Or should we just let it go and move on? We have a bunch of more ads to get in. I'm not normally this slow. You're in. <laughs> yeah, made in the USA is huge. I agree, Eric. But again, just think about the the real estate that takes up in a in a uh, title. Valiant. Can I make it? Oh, one digit short. We act. Let's get rid of the portal. It's a car ad. Valiant USA. Well, Tracy, I was told by somebody else to add the Dodge. <laughs> Everybody's a critic. <laughs> I, I agree, Winnicrow. Exactly. That's the main picture, right? That's what's going to sell the ad. Is the groovy looking car that everybody likes. Let's go. We're, we're doing it. Thank you for USA, though, Tracy and Eric. I appreciate that. I'm going to, I'll start, you know, putting that in. All right. We're going to, we're going to move on. Just. I don't know if I have any more car ads ready to roll, but let's take a look. If I do, we'll go to another car ad. If not, I'll give you guys a choice of what's next. Create similar. Now, again, I speak from having been burnt many a time. Got to get rid of two page now. Otherwise, I'll forget. Got to get rid of two page. Otherwise, I'll forget. <laughs> so I just get in the habit of doing it. Uh, I'll get rid of the photo. Let's see if we have any more cars. Party Mike, 
collection of National Geographic's, yeah. I've heard that, I mean, feel free if anybody has uh, expertise on these things. The National Geographic's are kind of a dime a dozen, especially that recent. That's my understanding that they don't sell very well. That's just my take. I think the, the 40s ones are about the only ones that I know of that sell pretty well, the World War II issues. They're, they're so common. I, ha I think everybody's had a subscription a subscription one time in their life to National Geographic. And uh, But again, if anybody out there knows better, then please feel free to help out Artie Mike with that question slash comment. Let's see if we have any other car ads. We got rid of the trucks. Anybody want to see? We have, here's some options. We have food ads, a couple of food ads. We have a cool TV set. We have a typewriter. Um, we have a car. Oh, this is another topic I was actually going to bring up. We have a Sunoco ad. Let's pull that up since we're in the cars. I put car ads together with these usually because you see he's working on a car, right? Stop at Sunoco, go with confidence. Um, and I'll usually look at the photo to see if there's actually a vehicle of note in it. But you can see in this one, there really isn't. They just have a guy with a red steering wheel. You see the back of a white car here. So I'm not going to be able to put any specific type. There you go. Win a crow, chiming in. This one we're not going to spend an hour on. Sunoco. See, when I put Sunoco in, those gas and oil, yeah, gas and oil companies. For my own personal store category, I leave it an automobile, though, uh, that goes with gas and oil and tire ads. You'll see a lot of, like, um, Goodyear tire ads and stuff like that. They, I keep them in an automobile just for continuity in my store. Sunoco brand, original, it's multicolor. It's a print ad. One. Yeah, mechanic, absolutely. That's going in there, Tracy. When mechanics wore hats. <laughs> That's really sad. Uh, a lot of this, they call them service, you know, gas station, service center, service station. I remember the days, I'm sure a lot of you guys too, when they used to, you know, it was customary when you went to a gas station, they would always check your oil for you automatically. They would always wipe your windshield down. All that stuff is just out the window now. Now you got to pump your own gas in most states. We have fallen mightily. Yeah, there you go, Eric. Sell the ads. Forget the magazine. That's what I'm saying. That's the whole point of what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, and again, I, I think, yeah, they wore uniforms. Exactly. Uh, if any of you have seen my series, that's uh, it's not complete yet, but I think I have four volumes up already on vintage print ads. That's the whole purpose is to show everybody how you can usually get a, I mean, even if you got one Life magazine for five bucks, which I would never pay, but you'd make your money back in seconds and you'd, you know, you could easily get at least 50, you could probably get at least 150 bucks out of a $5 magazine easily by ripping it up. Yeah, they always pump the gas. I don't know what happened to everybody, but you're right. We're going to do uniformed. I'm going to actually put uniformed mechanic. service station yeah i guess when across the new you know i think that's new too but you'd be surprised especially you know what sells from 90s and newer is computer stuff like you know now that's considered vintage computing and P i mean i sell i was telling um some people about a week and a half ago my wife used to work in an office that just closed down recently and we were lucky enough to get basically anything we wanted from the office so i have computers and computer pieces and modems and fax machines and cables of every sort and telephone systems and network equipment that I'm selling on eBay. And, you know, of all things, mice, the stupid little, you know, a, a mouse. Wired vintage mice <laughs> were selling for like 20 bucks a pop. They're just generic, you know, Microsoft mouse. Uh, one of them said um, Microsoft uh, Windows 95 a mouse. And people, you know, younger kids, quote unquote, that are in their 20s now or whatever, they think that stuff is old and they collect it as a vintage piece. So the ads in that case, like if you found a 1995 Windows ad, it probably worth some money. Probably be worth some money. Yeah, I know in Jersey you can't pump. I know I lived a, a lot, long time in New Jersey. 
it was shocking the first place i grew up in new york obviously and um we never pumped our gas and when i moved to new jersey it was just shocking that i had to go out, go out and do it myself yeah the newer ads that we consider new um there's a nostalgia for younger people again that's the one product i could think of right off the bat is any uh computer kind of stuff that was or internet just came out you know 93 94 let's say it's when you like if you could find like an ad that advertises um an old browser or something like that or yahoo when it first came out that, that stuff would probably probably be collectible and marketable all right um anybody think of any it's got a big old i wish i knew what that tool was some kind of cool wrench Yeah, there you go. Great example, Tracy. Any Apple, quote unquote, old Apple stuff is very good. You know, even really relatively recently, like the, you know, let's say the first iPod. If you see an advertisement for that, that's probably collectible to people. <laughs> that's something the Victorians didn't do, did they? Pumping your own gas in a gown and a wig. It's hysterical. All right, like I said, I'm not going to put an hour into this one. It's pretty generic. But again, somebody might dig it. So we're going to list it. Um, Sunoco Vintage Printed, Uniformed Mechanic. Um, let me fix my pricing on this one, too. We'll go back to $14.99 on this guy. Um, exactly, when a crow. That would be. That looks like art to me, too. Pretty well done, though. I know like, you know how postcards, the old postcards, people would color them in, like hand paint them. I wonder if sometimes they would use a photo, like look at the, especially this down here with the couple in the car on the bottom left, if you guys can see that. It looks almost like it's, um, yeah, service station's a good one. I like that. Um, it almost looks like it was a photograph maybe, and they colored it or something to make it look like a piece of art. I'm not sure, because this is really good. If that's, if that's painted or something, that's incredibly well done. I don't know how good it comes across on the on YouTube, but it's a the real item is very vivid. It looks pretty real. I do like service station a lot. Um, now here we go with the you know how we were talking. Eric was saying about adding car or automobile to certain things. This might be a case where I actually use the word car because I'm in collectibles, gas and oil. So there's no mention of a car or an automobile. Um, so I'm gonna put car. That's about. God bless you, babe. Thank you. My wife just sneezed. Say bless you, everybody. No. Um, yeah, that's good. Nothing really incredible about this ad. Let's just get it up. Oop, and I missed one. See, everybody, this is what I do all the time. Two pages. This is not two pages. You don't want to get the dreaded item not as described. Yeah, you're right. They look, they do. They look better than real photos. Thank you, Winnie Crow. Winnie Crow says, "Bless you, honey." Oh, thank you. Winnie Crow is the one who suggested we go visit that Columbus uh, antique place. We are going, and we will report back to you, Winnie Crow. All right, let's get this one up. Full color. She likes full color. Um, what's a good word? If you guys can think of, like you just said, Winnie Crow, how it's a a piece of art not or an illustration what about using illustration in the title instead of photo maybe i'll put illustration in there Damn. ah one space right, we're gonna move on from this one it's nothing too exciting list All right, that will do it for the car portion of tonight's festivities. <laughs> I think we got all the cars up that we have uh, for this specific magazine. So let's create similar. Let's take a swig of water. Let's wipe out all the unnecessary words. Anybody want to see a cool 60s uh, TV? Early 60s TV? Use... What is that word? 
L L L O. Food. Audio Mike wants food. You don't want the TV? Any other requests? <laughs> we have a few food ads, including a double page. I think that, oh no, that is not a, was that the one that is a centerfold? It might be a centerfold, that one. I L L O. What does that mean at the risk of sounding really stupid? TV says Ani Mike. Okay. Pop art, but it's the 60s, Eric. It's 61. But I know, you know, we've talked about that too, right? 61 is really still the 50s. The Beatles haven't come out yet. Foods. All right, let's go to food then. TV is a one off. We'll save TV for later on. All right, let's go with some food. Let's see. What's the cool food item? Should we go with the, the layups, the easy sales? Yeah, let's go with a layup. I present to you adorable young child. Always always something you could advertise. Lucky Whip. Who remembers Lucky Whip? It looks like Ready Whip. I'm sure it evolved into Ready Whip, but at this point it's called Lucky Whip. Basically a can of whipped cream. What do we think? I've never heard of Lucky Whip. I bet you it was just... Uh... Oh, very good. I-L-L-O means illustration. Thank you very much, Winokro. Maybe I'll uh, add that in because I think we had a couple of spaces to play with on that one. Do we like this ad, everybody? Whipped cream. Let me know if anybody knows Lucky Whip. <laughs> Indeed it does. Lucky Whip. Whipped. Takes us to whipped cream, ice cream, um, cheese always falls under dairy advertising. You see in the collectible section, you could choose other dairy advertisements or you could just choose dairy. Strawberry, yeah, strawberry shortcake is going in. Tracy's jumping on all the keywords right away. I did that so you could read the letters. Never heard of luck, yeah, I never heard of Lucky Whip either. Like I said, if you look at the uh, photo, which we'll get to again, it looks like Ready Whip. Even the font's exactly the same, right? Regular Ready Whip whipped cream. Maybe it was called um, Lucky Whip in 61. Need a space after 61. I think I just fixed that. Thank you very much, Joe. You see that? There's a delay with YouTube, but I fixed it. You'll see in a second. Bam. Dessert shot. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Let me fix these things first. We're going to go to category. We're going to go dairy advertising. We're going to change my category, my store category to food. We will live in the land of food for the next couple of ads. 60s is the same. We'll fill in the basics, right? Original. It's a print ad. Lucky Whip. I don't see many of those out there. I bet you, if anybody wants to do a quick search on eBay, see if you find any Lucky Whip ads or anything. All right, uh, 61. Here we go. Looks good. All right, let's have fun with the photo now. Everybody's coming up with great keywords for me. Um, Let's just look at the, I always look at the, kind of like the tagline, if you will. Amazing scientific demonstration. That's funny any dessert into a work of art so yes strawberry i agree with strawberry shortcake totally i agree with dessert totally child or boy this is where a lot of people use adorable or, or cute or whatever but i don't i think that's kind of silly no sales audio mike huh that means law of averages says mine's gonna sell all right let's put um, what did we just decide for sure? We're going to put dessert, right? I'm going to put strawberry shortcake. Maybe I'll put strawberry shortcake dessert. I like it to read, you know, not just a bunch of keywords that make no sense thrown together. I like to try to have it read sort of 
grammatically or you know like a sentence when possible so strawberry shortcake dessert kind of reads well i think that's all i'm gonna do should i write boy i'll write boy look at that that takes us to all the characters being used do we like that bad photo went across say eh? that's the difference now here's an example remember i was saying earlier how sometimes i will augment whipped cream in the title yes i put whipped cream in the title on occasion if you look at the ad closely even though it's a good image certainly there is some age toning on this one you can see you see on the bottom that little bit of brown on the edge age toning something that um i guess is expected to an extent every once in a while like this looks a little dark to me so this i'm not going to do it now because it takes a few minutes but you like that tracy thank you um like I was saying earlier, on occasion, I'll, I'll augment the photo a little bit. And I wouldn't change it dramatically because a classic case of, you know, if somebody buys that and sees this really vivid, bright color thing, and then they get a sort of brownish tin to the tint to the paper, they're going to be disappointed. We don't want to disappoint our buyers. So if I was to tweak this, I might just brighten it ever so slightly. But we're going to leave this one. It's a cute image. It's a cool product. Lucky Whip. Who knew? We're going to let it roll. Right? I think we're good. Make sure we don't have that two page stuck anywhere by accident. Make sure I have it in my right categories. Bam. And just a point to make. Yeah, it looks, yeah, exactly. That's a very, yeah, it's like a vignette. Yeah. It kind of adds, you know, to the classic vibe of the product, right? Of, the, of what I'm selling. Vintage. Let's go create similar. Uh oh, the heat's going on. Must be getting chilly. All right. That one was textbook. Look at that. No characters left. We've got all the pertinent words in there. I'm sticking with food so we don't have to keep jumping around. Next up for your consideration. An old standby we're going to bring in, folks. Campbell's Soup. Soup is good food. That's okay, but you've helped enormously when a crow. So that's it's kind of like you were listing. Good old Campbell soup, everybody. Campbell soup always sells. The thing about Campbell soup, as far as category, it's just soup. I think yeah. See, it doesn't give you the brand for whatever reason. It's funny how certain categories they the brand comes up right away. You would think Campbell's would warrant its own brand, but it just goes under soup, which is fine with me. It's mm, good. Cool picture. Let's fill in the basics. Campbell's theme of soup. Original. You see how most of this stuff fills in itself. It really is. It's a great niche, niche, whatever you want to say, to list in. If I wasn't live on a camera, I mean, I would be plowing through these things. I could, even, even with the talking, we've still got like maybe 10 ads up already. And I know for some people, that's they think that's a lot for a day to have 10 listings. You know, I could seriously do 100 in a day once they're all you know once all the scans are in place and everything i could easily do 100 of these but this isn't a race tonight we're kind of just having a nice conversation we're learning we're giving each other great ideas and i still have this thing checked people gallery plus i better not get a fee all right so we have all the do we have yeah we have all the item specifics filled out let's go back to this cool picture Let's see what kind of soup do we have we have chicken noodle soup cannot go wrong with that now that's a lunch right there everybody piece of a big hunk of swiss cheese on a piece of bread with a tomato lettuce sort of it looks like garnish to me a banana and a steaming hot bowl of chicken noodle soup i mean can you talk about made in the usa and Amer americana this is it in a photo isn't it soup in a sandwich is a little thing down here we're going to put soup in a sandwich, but let's, uh, let's go back up. So we're going to, now we know it's Campbell's chicken noodle. So we'll fill that out immediately. 33 Campbell's. Yeah. Yep. Now that fills up, you know, more than half of our title already, just with those basics. Campbell's chicken noodle soup, vintage printed. Oh, for taste of oh, chicken noodle. Yeah. It's no competition. I agree. One of, one of crow Lipton. Campbell's is watered down garbage, but it's iconic. 
Same thing with this photo, everybody. See how it has a little bit of uh, the age toning. It's never a deal breaker, though. People understand old paper gets, you know, on occasion gets that toning to it. We have mm -mm good down there, but that's we don't need to do that. I'm going to put soup and a sandwich for sure. Uh, I'll just put, should I put soup again? I could also, because we're in the soup category, nix the word soup. Put Campbell's chicken noodle, vintage bread, add soup, and sandwich. Anybody else see anything glaring I should be adding to this as far as a keyword? Should I put banana? Comfort food. That's a good one, Tracy. I like that. Yeah, what the heck? And then I'll probably finish out my... Oh, another zero. Oh, I have an extra space. That's why. <laughs> yeah, Campbell's kids. They're always at the bottom. I have that sometimes in some of the listings when I crawl. I put that in. You could see it down here. But this one, um, that pretty much fills it up, right? Comfort food is a cool idea. Yeah, we're going to let this one go. Everybody good? Yeah, homie, exactly. All right. That was an easy one. Campbell's, just for everybody's knowledge, is absolutely... Yeah, that's the bolo. You can identify the dinnerware. Ooh. I'll tell you what, Audie Mike. I mean, if we blow that photo up big time, let's see if we can indicate. That would be, that's actually a great thing to look out for. Even the candle holder, right? If there's some cool brand on there. Like, I think that's just a sugar bowl on the back, right? To the left of the flowers, a candle stick. I don't see any brand on the dish or the bowl or the silverware. I don't see any branding. Hungry again. I still haven't eaten. I'm hungry. Period. That does look appetizing though, doesn't it? Big fan of Swiss cheese too. The banana is kind of an odd, an odd man out in that dish. But you know what? You got all your food groups, but it's not. All right. Campbell's. I think we're good with that one. Let's see what's next. We'll do a few more. It's 8 o'clock already. This is supposed to be one hour or two hours, but I'm having a good time. If you guys are having a good time, I'll stay on for sure. All right. Let's see what's next in the food category do we have any more soup nope soup is gone ah uh, food 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 all right we'll go with another one i didn't know existed shaped like russell right but a lot of makers did similar styles right you just to mimic it right does anybody know heard of or remember something called robin hood flower Pre-sifted Robin Hood flour, complete with a recipe. We're going to use the word recipe in our in our uh, description for sure. This is what I present for you folks. Let me know if anybody knows of this thing. Pre-sifted Robin Hood flour. Let's go up. Robin Hood. And just having Robin Hood in there is going to attract people that are into Robin Hood. Yes, says Tracy. <laughs> And that is good in age tone. CJ2. Cool. Pre-sifted. Kind of cool, right? These are, um, there's all kinds, there's tons. Yeah, it has a recipe one across, exactly, which I was going to put in my uh, title, but if you guys want to look at that quick. Yellow layer cake. Butter and sugar, basically. Yeah, baking in general, absolutely, Tracy. Baking it adds to really well. And there's so much variety in them. And again, it's so funny to see different times and what people are into at the time. Like the 30s being the Great Depression. Obviously, a lot of my 30s ads are bare bones stuff. And it's like about making the most basic food things to serve the most amount of soup. Soup ads are a dime a dozen. 
in the in the thirties during the depression, um, making homemade bread. Like I said, getting the most out of a meal. Minnesota. Oh, is that where Robin Hood flowers from? Minnesota. Okay. Robin Hood flower. Let's change our category. You can see there is a category down here. Food and beverage baking flour. We will select that one. Always want to get drill down to the most, you know, drill down to the most obvious uh, category you can get into. And let's fill out these things. It's a multicolor. It's an original. It is Robin Hood. It's printed. Not modify it. It's from 1961. U.S. of A. The theme is bakery and baking. Alrighty, the fun part again. Everything else is going to stay the same. Pre-sifted all-purpose flour with recipe. Oh, and this is Rita Robbins. Oh, excuse me, Rita Martin's Robin Hood Yellow. Ye oh, I get so tongue-tied with some of these things. Rita Martin's Robin Hood Yellow Layer Cake Recipe. First of all, does anybody know who Rita Martin is? Is she somebody of note or is she just some gal that put in a recipe? I'm going to put yellow layer cake recipe. If anybody wants to do a little digging for me on Rita Martin. Is she like a Betty Crocker type person? She is. We want to we definitely want to put her in the description. If she's nobody, she's nobody. Definitely put Rita Martin. Who is Rita Martin, Tracy? See, that's why I asked. And that's why you have to explore these ads and look at every little detail. Like you guys brought up great points about cutlery or dishware or, you know, looking for brands that might be just incidentally in, in an ad for something else. But I'm being told, look for Rita Martin as a baker or something. If you care to uh, expand upon that, Tracy, I'd appreciate it. 61. No, she was dead already. My wife is looking it up too. We have, and we have a picture of the gal right here. She's a recipe winner. Yeah, she just won like so. It's it's nobody of note, right? She won the Robin Hood Prize winning recipe by Martin Rita. Rita Martin. Robin Hood Prize winning recipes. Martin Rita published by Robin Hood Flower. You think that's a sellable uh, angle to throw in there, Audie Mike? Rita Martin. We'll throw her in. For she has a book. That's good. All right, so we're going to throw in Rita Martin. Pride winning recipes. Yep, exactly. One across. That's funny. I just said it and you wrote it. Um, I'll just put cake recipe so we could fill in. We'll get rid of yellow yellow layer. Prize winning. Look at that. How's that look, everybody? Robin Hood flower vintage printed cake prize winning recipe Rita Martin. I like it. I think it's good. Again, just to note for anybody who might be doing this, thank you, Audie. If you put a color in your title, like I had yellow cow, yellow cake before or something, it's going to keep asking you to change your color, but I'm not going to do that. The ad is not yellow. The ad is multicolor, which is why we have multicolor. All righty. Excellent. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I always feel better when Tracy says excellent or go good to go or thumbs up or clapping hands. Prize winning cake in that order. Uh-oh, hold on. Okay. Yeah, you're right. That actually reads a lot. Like I just said earlier, right? How I like the thing to read, to make sense when you read it. That actually helps lots. Okay. Prize winning recipe. Cake recipe. Beautiful. Thank you, Winnicrow. I like that. 
much better. Let's let this one rip. Uh, and when the two of them agree, take it to the bank. Alrighty. Another one down. Just for fun, how many have I listed? Cake before recipe. Did I not? Did I screw that up? I'll fix it. Thank you, Eric. That's good for our own edification. Cake before recipe. Yes, I have cake before recipe when I crow. You see it right there? It says Robin Hood flower vintage printed prize winning cake recipe. Rita Martin. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We have listed along with all the conversation and everything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 12 ads already. Not bad. Let's do another one. We're on fire here. All right, we're gonna. I think we have a at least one more food at Ed Canada. Why? Is it a famous Canadian uh, product? What should we do here, everybody? All right, we'll do one more food ad. It's a big one. It's a double page. Coming at you. Okay, that's cool, Eric. Maybe I'll add that in my description. Look at this one, everybody. Swift's Premium Ham in a can. It looks like spam to me. An inedible World War II ration product that should be banned from the planet, but for some reason still is sold. That would be spam. This is just Swift's Premium. Canned meats. Nice looking ad, though, isn't it, everybody? That is actually a centerfold. Keto raspberry. Oh, I got to tell my wife this, honey. Tracy, on our show the other night, yeah. along with Eric, they are drinking keto raspberry orange margaritas while watching the show. Well, I'm... What makes it keto? No booze in it? <laughs> well, I'm decorating. That's I'm a great ad. Show. Isn't that a great ad when a crow? I like that too. It looks really good. This is one I enhanced a little. I don't know if you guys can tell. I just, um, you can see it looks very white. It really is pretty white. Um, what is it called? Glow or something? There's a there's a option on most photo edit editors. It's like add glow or something. You can see it kind of gives them a smoothing effect on their faces and whatnot. But it looks just like this in, per in person. Obviously, you got the Boy Scouts. Obviously, you got Swift's Premium Ham. You got canned ham. Um, it's two pages. So let's go back up. We're going to do Swift's. No sugar. Okay. Well, there's lots of naturally occurring sugar, though, in fruit, right? And raspberry and orange and margarita. What is in a margarita? What's the booze? Tequila. That's awesome, Eric. Enjoy. Cheers. Swift's premium ham. Yeah, they do. Thank you. I thought so too. Very vibrant. You see what we said earlier about the 61 is still the 50s though, right? Like if you look at that, looks like a 50s. Everything about it, the crew cuts, the it just looks 50s, even though it's 61. Very cool. I agree. I love this ad. And then, oh, what I was trying to say before, I'm sorry. This is actually, it is a centerfold. Um, this line, you see how it's off to the right a little bit? As big as the scanner is, a double, double as uh, my flatbed is 18 inch maximum. A double page Life magazine is about what 30 inches across. It's too big, so I kind of place one side on, flipped it around to the other side on, and then I have to put that crease in the middle to combine them. So I kind of cut. It's getting into some minutiae here, but right where the kid, right here where this white line is, is where I cut the ad in the photo editor. The ad itself is actually one continuous ad. Right around this area, you can see a little discoloration. That's the uh, the middle of the centerfold. So this ad is very, it's going to be a desirable ad because it's a true centerfold. It's not two separate pages that were merged together. And very carefully I was when I took this apart so that you see there's no staple marks or anything in the middle. So this is a groovy ad. Swiss premium ham. Let's go to change our category. Before I get too many different keywords in i try to go i try to get the category up because like 
the more you add, the more confusing it could be to eBay to, to find the proper category. So when I keep it simple and just say Swift's premium ham, you can see they have food. That's fine. Other food and beverage. They don't have a ham collectible section, which is fine with me. We're going to do Boy Scouts. Ginger. Oh, uh, yeah, that's the redheads, right? Boy, I got to put the Boy Scouts, though, right? America. Oh, of America to get the USA in there, Tracy. We like America. Boy Scouts of America Ginger Kids. That's kind of a cool bet it though. What do we think? Oh shoot, what did I forget though, everybody? Two page. Gotta put my two page. I think I'm just gonna kinda leave it like this. Two uh oh Cub Scouts. Cub Scouts. Are you sure the I'm I'm not questioning you, Eric. You probably know, but can you tell by the uniform that that's a Cub Scout, not a Boy Scout? Or I know they had like Eagle Scout and all these different Cub Scouts. You think I should put Cub Scouts instead of Boy Scouts of America? It would give me a lot more wiggle room. Cub Scouts. I'll go with it. Let's just get a two-page verbiage in here. Two-page. Two page. Now, in this case, I'm going to do centerfold. It's not two separate pages. Multicolor original printed. Where's the brand? Swifts. I'm terrible at spelling when I can't see. Uniform. Oh, okay. Thank you for that, Eric. I appreciate it. And Audie Mike agreeing. Right, we have all the specifics filled out. That kind of fills up the... Oh, no. I have some wiggle room. That's right. Um, you guys like that... What did you say, uh, Winnicrow? Ginger boys or something? Ginger for the redheads? Premium ham. Two-page printed. Cub Scouts. Camping, camping might be a good word. Even though it's kind of faux camping, you can see they're like standing in front of a blue uh, sheet, but they have like the log down here. Canned ham. Ham. I like that too. Yeah, you're out. Oh, and look at this, everybody. Remember how I just said we should look in detail? It says right here. Cub Scouts on the kid's uh, sleeve or uh, pocket. Cub Scouts. Metal plates. I think camping might be a good word to throw in there to round this out. Let me know what you guys think. Before we forget, let's make sure we jack the price up on this guy. $19.99. I think that looks pretty good, right? We hit most of the, we covered all the bases. Have to have the print. We got the can. Good call, Winter Crow. Thank you for that. I think I said that in the beginning, but I forgot to put it in. Like spam, a disgusting product. Where I live now, I'm, I think I mentioned this before. I'm from New York. I live in um, extreme southern Pennsylvania, like five minutes from the Delaware border, south of Philadelphia. I've been here like 10 years. It's where my, where my wife grew up. And they have a product, an ungodly product here called, what is it called? That nasty ham, uh, the breakfast thing, the, the scrapple, scrapple. Just by the name, who would ever eat scrapple? <laughs> Scraps. But scrapple is popular here, and it's kind of the same thing. No, it does not look appealing in any way, shape, or form when it grow. I agree. It looks like scrapple. I think it is literally stuff that's left on the floor that they scrape up. And when they don't use it for hot dogs, they put it in scrapple. Well, anyway, that's my social comment about food tonight. Let's get this one up because that's a two page. I want that up. You love scrapple. Oh, I don't know about that. 
Look up Scrapple, everybody. What is what is Scrapple? I bet you it's byproducts. I, I seriously think it is like scraps, like stuff left on the floor, pieces of fat and Scrapple is a lot more gray. Oh, okay. That's from the blood. Yes, it is, like black pudding. Let's get rid of two page before I forget. And I'll see if we have any more food ads, everybody. People seem to be enjoying this category. And you're right, it is gray. And uh, it is from blood, I bet you. It's pretty disgusting. Tastes so good. <laughs> I didn't know they had that. They didn't have that when I lived in that area. When a crow. Scrapple. Scrabble. <laughs> Don't eat Scrabble. When's the last time we played Scrabble? It's a game that should be played more often. I think we're good with the food ads, everybody. Um I think, I think, I think. Let me see if there's any left. Um, I'm trying to find, here's a, I'm going to just show you guys this because I think it's kind of cool. It might be a bolo as well. Let's take a look in a moment. Let you guys catch up to the stream. Parker pens, ladies and gentlemen. Think about this. 1961. A Parker pen for five bucks. Five bucks? Five bucks is a lot for a pen now. Can you imagine 50 years ago spending five bucks on a pen? This is a KOTOR pen. It's a memorable gift for grads, dads, birthdays, and anniversaries. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a good ad. Oh, Tracy with the copy and paste from Wikipedia, probably. A mush of pork scraps. That, that's where the conversation ends. <laughs> um, this is literally what it says. A mush of pork scraps and trimmings, which is what I said. It's from the floor. Combined with cornmeal and spices, the mush. Oh, I can't even read this. How do you people eat this stuff? Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, it's it's, it's great. It's it's what they use for dog food. You could buy a block, a brick of scrap at the store. Oh, it's very when a crow down here. It's uh, it's like a breakfast thing. It's just it's it's kind of like when you go down south and they have grits. In this area, Scrapple is just a thing that people get for breakfast. What's the other one? Uh, corn chip beef. Mm, cream chip beef. Cream chip beef. It's just little slices. Don't be a pansy. That's than yeah, it's got to be. What do we think of this pen ad, everybody? Exclusive from Parker. Literally given as gifts. This is, And you don't see these very often. I'm looking premium on this ad. We're going to keep this one. Even though it's one page, I think we're going to say it to 1999. <laughs> Parker 45 and let's go to our category and see what comes up look at this we do have a collectibles now here's something I run into once in a while a bit of a quandary <laughs> so that's do you folks see my quandary? Look in the category section, everybody. The 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 fallback, if you can't find anything, this, I was going to show you guys this anyway, so I'm glad it popped up, is just advertising in print, and they throw a decade in there. Meaning, like, we don't really know where to put this in, or if you find an item that just doesn't fit anything specifically, it's kind of a de facto, just throw it in 60 to 69. I don't know how far-reaching that category is going to go for people. Thank you, Winnicrow. Um but now you go down, and this is more intriguing, right? We do have a collectibles Parker pen. Great. But you see, it's not advertising. This would imply to me that somebody's selling a Parker pen, not an advertisement. This has potential issues written all over it. Because if I put this ad in there, which is tempting, because it's going to go to the people that want these ads, right? If you're into Parker pens, why not get a Parker pen ad? You're going to get some person that thinks that they're buying the pen and argue with you and... You, so I'm probably not going to put it in there. You have another, even worse than 60 to 69, you just have other collectible ads, which just means we have no idea. And then you have an other field here where it says this was fountain pens and this is ballpoint pens. But again, I'm thinking people are going to look in that category for the actual pen, not an advertisement for the pen. So that is my quandary. Cream chip beef was my dad's favorite. Ah. Oh. 
Very cool. Yeah, exactly, Tracy. Exactly. But I'll tell you what, I'd sooner have cream chip beef than Scrapple. At least it's beef. And that is good here. They use, re you know, it's not bits of floor scrapings. It's actual slices of, you know, roast beef or corned beef. I'm not even sure what they use. And the cream is basically cornstarch, everybody. It's just cornstarch and water to make it thick. It's kind of flavorless, actually. You need salt and pepper on it. So what do you guys think about the, the uh, category for this guy? It's kind of a unique ad. You don't see a lot of these. Anything else in a writing category? No, they kind of just draw. You mean just in general, right? I could, yeah, you, you do have the option. I'm sure, you, again, you guys probably know, but you can search a category. And I could put uh, the floor gives a flavor. <laughs> writing tools. I don't know. Let's try to find calligraphy tools, other writing collectibles, other pen accessories they have. Collectible ballpoint. But you see how nothing says advertising, right? Uh, pen advertising. Does anybody see anything with the advertising? I don't. So my decision is, do I stick it in an actual Parker pen category? And I don't even know if this is, does it say, let's look at the picture. Is it a pound? <gasps> Fountain pen or ballpoint? 45. Parker 45. That's the one. Which one is, Tracy? You think I should put it in the... Um, I think that's a ballpoint pen, no? Let me see if I blow it up, if I could read it a little more clearly. Again, when you blow these things up, they're really... If you just right-click on the photo, open a new tab, you get a full Parker pen category. Okay. I want to see if this says it's a, I think it's a ballpoint. Drinks ink from the bottle. No, that would be a fountain pen. This is a fountain pen. It drinks super quick ink into an ink cartridge. Yep, it's a, it is when a crow. So let's, yeah, what the heck? Let's throw it in there. You'll see how the category, um, the item specifics are going to change radically because it's going to think that you're putting a pen into this category. Um, but let's do it. We're going to go fountain pen, Baca, and let's see what comes up for our item specifics. Baca, fountain pen, Baca 45. Those are all good. Material. Wow, it's pretty limited. You see this? We don't really know the ink color, but they're saying it's required. I'm going to put, what do you guys think, black? Yeah, let's put black. No, obviously what I could do, and I probably will do, just so I learn about this, I'm going to look up a Parker 45 pen. Mention print ad in the condition. Parker 45 pen. Let's do a little learning. Oh, and... Wow, they're expensive on eBay, I'll tell you that. The Parker 45. There's a whole website devoted to the Parker 45. They started in 1960. Many colors, finishes, uh, main difference. I'm trying to see if it's plastic or metal. 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 So for that category, well, let's fix this first of all. Where are we going to put pens? We're going to put pens in, I think I have it in Home Goods. Oh, yeah? 45, sure. Yeah, I'm going to go household items with that guy. Um, now we know it's a fountain pen, so we're going to put fountain. I bet you this sells pretty quick. I have a good feeling about it. NA for ink color. Yeah, you think? Because there's no way to really know, right? I like it. Because we're not selling the pen, we're selling the ad. Very good point, Macro. Um, new kind of pen you can fill two ways. That's kind of, I guess that's an interesting. It takes a cartridge and you can also drink out of the bottle. Uh, fill two ways, cartridge. 
bottle. Maybe be able to get ink in there. Bam! Again, look at this. Every character. What do we think of that title, everybody? I think it's kind of good. Yeah, did you find that uh, website, Eric? There's a whole thing. It's called pocketpens.net. There's a whole history about the 45. Kind of cool. Designed by Don, Do Don Doman, who designed another like five or six different versions. 17 colors. Yeah, it's kind of cool. All right. I think we're good with this one. If everybody agrees, we will uh, send it off into the ether. Thank you, Winnicro. Oh, you can't read it. I'm sorry. Can you read it now? Well, you got the antique eyes going again today. It says 1961 Parker 45 fountain pen vintage printed filled two ways cartridge ink bottle. And that takes us right to zero. I'm going with it. Let's list that one. I thought that was a kind of unique ad. I think we have a couple of pocket pens, but not many of them. Pen ads aren't that common. All right, I think we're going to do one more ad. And then we will call it a night. But I, I really appreciate everybody showing up tonight. I wasn't sure what the turnout would be for something like this. But I think it's really cool that everybody gets to participate, basically, in these listings. And we all learn together. A lot of fun. It makes it a lot less boring when you're listing with other people. All right, let's make this one a good one. Win a crow, win a crow, win a crow. Talking typewriters. That's what I was going to pull up. Made by the Remington Rifle people. Wow. Did you know that or did you just look it up? <laughs> Do you want to see a typewriter ad? Here's, here's your choices, everybody. Ready? Let me get rid of the, the pen. We can go TV. We can go typewriter. We can go Listerine. <laughs> Um, we can go toilet tissue. Oh, congratulations, Tracy. That's cool. When a crow, you knew that. Yeah. What is that? Like a face slap? You meant like cheers or congratulations. Good stuff. What'd you sell? So what do you guys think? You want to see the typewriter? A lot of typewriter ads are out there. A lot of typewriter ads. And they sell very well. But that's another one of those categories where when I get to the category section of the listing, so many choices. There isn't an advertising typewriter section. So you wind up going into Royal Typewriter. And it's just like we did with the pens. You go into the uh, typewriter section where you would actually sell a typewriter. And I literally had somebody message me one time saying, this is false advertising. I thought you were selling the Royal Whatever I said. No, it's a print ad. It's a picture of a print ad. It says print ad 87 times. But you can always count on certain people being so ignorant. <laughs> and then they just, they just don't read. So that's why I worry about putting an advertisement for a product in the actual product category. Um, Audie Mike. Yes, absolutely. Every day. Do I have a draft pile? No. Um, it depends on what I'm listing, obviously, right? We have this, you know, print ads is what's kind of my... My main niche, niche, niche. However, we sell all kinds of stuff. I have tons of records up for sale. I have a lot of Disney stuff with big Disney fans. My wife and I, I have uh, all types of different music. I have everything under the sun. We have office supplies. We have computer stuff. Um, stuff like that, obviously, is going to be a lot slower for me to list because they're kind of one-offs. Records go pretty quickly. Um, but the print ads, when you say uh, a draft, I have an ongoing, which is what I'm using now, just sell similar, sell similar. I'll save that. And then when I get like 50 or 100 scans into my computer, I'll go in and just bang them out in a day. So usually like at least 50 or 100 a day of the of the ads just to keep them, keep pounding away because they sell. And I have, no exaggeration, probably 100,000 ads I could list. It's just a matter of the getting the physical time to list so much volume. Pixie wig for <laughs> Eva Gabor. That's hysterical. Remington gun people. That's very cool. All right, so what do you think? Winter Crow, this is your call because you've been a trooper all night. You want to go typewriter? You want to go TV? You want to go Johnson & Johnson? 
for an unknown product, you want to go Listerine. Or you want to go toilet paper. <laughs> How's that for variety? <laughs> Call it Winnicrow. As we anxiously await the decision from the middle of New Jersey. Listerine. All right. Let's go Listerine. Ooh, did I submit? Yes, I submitted. I thought I didn't hit enter on that last one. Here you go. Black and white Listerine ad. A very involved looking ad. Let's take a look. Be prepared. You never know whom you'll meet. You never know whom you'll meet in the next 10 minutes. So always be sure your breath is fresh. Words to live by right there, ladies and gentlemen. Listerine's protection in-depth stops breath four times faster. Cross-section of people walking by each other. Yep, it's a new category, absolutely. Lots of Listerine ads, very, very popular. All the way back to, again, somebody can look it up if they want, but it goes way back. I know my 20s and 30s ads, plenty of Listerine. Mouthwash. Yep. Keywords are coming out. All right, let's put Listerine. Let's go to the category. Always got to remember to change your category. And you can see again, and you know where the name Listerine came from. Look up Dr. List. Oh, Dr. List. Oh, was it uh, yeah, body snatching? It's an antiseptic and it wasn't really meant to be a mouthwash originally. Is that right, Winnicrow? I think it's made to like clean um, surgical tools or something. Or I really think that was its first use. And somehow somebody figured out it supposedly kills germs and burns like you're drinking turpentine. Well, anyway, Listerine category. We'll put it in health and beauty aids. And in my store category for this, I have personal care products, I believe. Yep, personal care products, we will call that. You like the multiple? Yeah, it, it almost looks like a silhouette, but it's actually, you see that, when a crow? Like when you look at it from this vantage point, it kind of looks like a silhouette, but it's actually just black and white photos of people. All right, so we have uh, categories. Let's fill this stuff out. It is Listerine. It's original. This is a black and white ad. Nineteen sixty-one. Yep, surgical use and disinfection. There you go. I knew I read that somewhere. If Annie was on, she would. Annie was on earlier, but if she was still on, she would love that. She loves um, 19th century in general. I think she's. She had a video about clothing from the 1840s. I think that's her. She loves like uh, 1840s, 1850s. Um, everything about it, the clothing, the style. Check out Annie, everybody. She has a great YouTube channel. This one we're going to take down to 14. That's a kind of a run-of-the-mill ad. Generally speaking, just for my... Yeah, they look like silhouettes. I thought so, too. I think we talked about this a long time ago when the, when the stream started. But basically, again, pricing is subjective. You do whatever you want. But I have it at $14.99 right now for a single-page basic ad. Unless something's really special, like we've went through tonight. $14.99. This, you know, Listerine, I don't think is going to be a, a major uh, seller. But I will take $14.99 when I paid a penny all day and all night. All right. So we have Listerine. We have a choice to put antisept antiseptic, which I think I will. Put Listerine antiseptic. Mouthwash. Way to go, Tracy. Keep watching, Tracy. It's not... It's not me listening. It's you watching me. That's what's that's the magic. All right, talk to me, guys. It would absolutely would work well in a dentist office. And when a crow, if you see, um, you know, I say perfect for framing and all of mine. And then just to give you a little peek at this stuff, I have this in here where it says, um, uh, old advertisements are ideal for collectors, historians, museums, home and business decor. That would, you know, a business decor, a dentist office. Um, again, the car ads, a lot of no, no, you know, no surprise here, but a lot of auto guys will buy that, like a lot of uh, mechanics and stuff. 
Yeah, she really is on a roll. What was the second sale, Tracy? I wish there was a way to put... It's not a silhouette, but that would be a cool word to throw in there. <laughs> wow, you're making some money. Beautiful. These aren't $5 items here you're selling either. You must tune in. Be prepared. I'm going to put be prepared. I'm going to put a couple... Mental care. There you go. That works. All right. Okay. I just I always dummy check everything. Never take, especially when I'm being distracted by the fact that I'm talking with people. Um, got a title. We're in personal care. We don't have that two-page verbiage. That's out of there. Good. Good. Pricing is right. Listerine, black and white. Let it rip. Social contact. That's interesting. One more or are we done? What do you think, people? 836. You got time for one more or you want to call it a night? Yeah, I was going to... Exactly. Dating is a good one, too. Or like courting or something I was going to say. Or bumping into each other. But we kind of filled up, I think, all the characters. You guys want to do one more or are you good? Let me know. Because um, when a crow picked out this Listerine ad... Tracy, you pick a you pick a category for me. I'm gonna tell you what's left, okay? Since you're on a roll, I don't want to cut off the momentum you got with your uh, your sales. One more. It's like I'm on stage for the encore again. All right, we'll do one more. We'll give Tracy the choice. I will give you the categories, okay? All right, want to crawl one more? Let's see what we got left. I think I have like ten ads left, but I'm not gonna do all ten. Give you high level category stuff. Um. We have we have a typewriter ad. We have a toilet paper ad. We have a TV ad. <laughs> That's a good thing. Is that right, Winnicrow? I'm not even watching that. But please hit the like button. And I'm sorry, if you guys see me looking to the side, I, I keep forgetting the camera's this way. I have my main screen here where I'm doing all my listing. I have a side screen over here with a different computer actually logged into YouTube so that I can see everything you guys see and see the chat. So if you see me looking this way, it's because I'm reading your messages. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude and not look into the camera. Um, yeah, please hit the like button. I'd appreciate it. Um, what do you think, Tracy? Typewriter, TV, toilet paper. Actually, oh, I didn't see this one. We have a... It's not going to sound exciting, but I think it's a oh telephone company. Telephone company ads do really well, just so everybody knows. Bell Telephone. Western Electric does well. I have a guy that collects Western Electric ads exclusively. It's always good to have a guy. The more you do this and the more you uh, stay with one category, uh, not that I stay with one category, but I just kind of specialize in this category. You start, I'm sorry, everybody knows this. You start to develop a following within it. And there's certain people that, I have, like I said, I have a Budweiser guy who always buys my Bud ads. I have a Western Electric telephone company guy always buys my Western Electric. So it's like pretty much I know the minute that I list it, they're going to sell, which is a really cool feeling. Tracy, what do you think? We have Bell Telephone, Toilet Paper, Typewriter, a Johnson & Johnson product, a TV, and that's it. Another car, but we already did car ads. Altees telephone. That a girl. I like the telephone one too. And guess what? We get a car. It will. This is a good, a great telephone app. We have a lot to work with. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about right now. It's black and white. Look at this. There's a delay on YouTube, so I have to wait until you see it. There you go. Look at that. Let us hear from you. Call us often. How adorable is this? Just married, young couple, parents waving goodbye. Ah, long distance rates. Oh, you got a return. No, 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 no. We don't do returns. Oh. 
What do you guys think of this ad? I think that's pretty cool. First of all, it's an, an awesome car. I don't know what it is. I don't know if anybody out there is still, if Eric's still out there, if he's a car guy. If you guys know what kind, it's a convertible. We know that, right? If anybody has any inkling as to what that car might be, please let me know. Isn't it cool in a car? I like that one. All right, let's start building it. We're going to do Bell Telephone. Which we'll be pleased to know is absolutely 22 years. Oh, this is your first return ever? I'm sure it's not. What are they? What are they uh, claiming? It's probably just married. Yep. What's the? If you care to share with us, when across, what is this return about? How dare they? First of all, how dare they? Telephones, telephone. Oh, I just got two new subscribers in the last thirty seconds. Thank you very much. Filling in the boring stuff that has to be filled in, and then we'll talk about the photo, get some cool words for it. That just leaves me, you know, the fact that it's her first return means it's probably, like most of them are, unless it's like clothes don't fit. Most of them are nonsense. I hope it's not some kind of stupid scam. Oh, you mailed the wrong hat. Well, that would be a valid one. Not the worst thing in the world, right? As long as it ha as long as they don't um yeah I know right Joe that's funny long distance uh when a crow as long as they uh don't leave you negative feedback right that's I'd much rather just return a, a hat and keep uh, good with that feedback I would do almost anything to um avoid a negative feedback you can, even if it costs you money just I'm sure again I'm sure you guys know this but that feedback is more valuable than almost anything you'd sell. Certainly more than a $20 ad. <laughs> uh, what was the brand? Bell. A phone company. Oh, cool, Tracy. I can't wait. What's the, without giving away too much, what's the general gist on your new video? I think I think we've mentioned a few times your next video should be going through your mom's house with a flashlight and the camera <laughs> from your vantage point and seeing what kind of artifacts you can uncover. Two white hats. Yeah, good call. You tell her to keep it as your you know what I do sometimes if it's if it's not that expensive, I'll say you can keep this as my gift or something, and then then you wind up getting good feedback on something that was a screw up. Get out, Sarah Burns. First of all, hello. Husband thinks the car in the ad is a 59 Chevy Impala. That is some deep-rooted knowledge of the automobile right there. If you could bang that out from that photo. Oh, there you go. Okay, cool. Yeah, right? How to, how to ship them. <laughs> 59 Impala. You need to be, when a crow, please subscribe to Tracy. All right, let's fill in the, we're going to go newlywed. Newlyweds, uh, what else? When a crow, same name. Let me scroll up and see what Tracy had a couple of words she banged out for me right out of the gate. This is everybody else's chance to contribute here, which I greatly appreciate. Convertible, just married. Convertible is absolutely right. Convertible. Parents. How's that? That's incredible. Well, tell them thank you, Sarah. Very much. Maybe I'll put that in... Hmm. Oh, I missed the field. Say that. Vacation. Oh, yeah, CJ, that's that's something that happens sometimes. That mildew smell is awful. We'll run into that at estate sales when we find bundles of magazines, especially if they're in a basement, obviously, right, or a cellar. Eric, 59 Chevy Impala had the cat. 
eye tail lights, which these have. Okay. Like slanty. And that's actually really good information. Only that vehicle had that, that uh, cat eye tail light. All right, we're going to list this one. Oh, that's awesome, Sarah. Yeah, got to get them up. I mean, these things, again, you. <laughs> I'm, I'm restating certain things over and over, but that's okay. I can't see anyone. I mean, I know people sell magazines. Um. And I guess there's certain issues of certain magazines that command some money, but I, I can't, you know, I've sold, I talked about this on one of my earlier live shows. There's an issue of life from 1957 with Burt Law on it, which I sold the magazine as a whole. I think it was almost 200 bucks. And it's only because in that issue, which is very famous, they mentioned mushrooms, like the psychedelic mushroom. It's not about Burt Law. It's not about the cover, but the fact that they mentioned science discovers mushrooms or something like that. So I did sell that for big bucks but short of that and a couple of maryland covers and a couple of beetle covers you know there's not a lot of magazines that as a whole would come close to the amount of money i can make by cutting them up into multiple pieces like this that's awesome sorry yeah get get them up um and if you need any help at all please you could refer to my video series i have on my channel um about vintage print ads there's at least two left i'm still finishing i'm editing the next one which would be the fifth edition and that's about shipping the ads but if you go back you could see everything from sourcing them to breaking them down how i cut them apart delicately how i scan them all kinds of information that's a good idea too cj maybe the mildew isn't you know infiltrated through the whole magazine if you could get a couple of ads out i would go for it i would use gloves though use like rubber gloves you don't want that mildew on your hands Oh, you did. Okay, great, Sarah. Thank you. And welcome to the show. See, Sarah's here. How do we give up now? Do we do one more again? We'll do one more. I want to get this TV ad up. I'm going to make an executive decision here. To show you guys the TV. Some of the TV ads are really cool, especially the real, this isn't that early, but the, the 40s TV ads, we have an issue of, I think it's a interesting thing about television. It was actually, I think, invented really in the 20s. Obviously, nobody really had it. In the 30s, they, they might have had a couple of very, very few stations. It was kind of slated to be the, the next big thing. And then World War II happened and the whole industry kind of paused so that after World War II, TVs explode, Milton Berle show, like late 40s. But um, those televisions, there's a really cool, we have an ad. I think the earliest TV ad we have is from 45 or 46, and it's Joe Lewis, the famous boxer, superimposed inside of a screen. It's a really cool ad. I love that. So some of these TV ads are very, very cool. Let's pull this one up. And you'll see the big uh, selling point on this guy is the fact that it has a remote control, which was quite the novelty for televisions, especially in 61. This would be the Admiral Super Sonar 19. Check that out. And this is the big feature here. Remote control. Don't know if it's a color set. It might be black and white. I'll have to look that up. It looks like I had a black and white set growing up. And it's funny, you know, like everything else, you get used to things as they change and you forget. But I never realized it was black and white. Like, you know what I mean? You just get used to watching shows and that's how you saw them and everything was black and white. And then when color came, it was like, wow. It was shocking to see. I'm trying to look somewhere in the writing if it says anything about black and white or color. I'm thinking black and white. Yep, sharper blacks, true whites. Black and white. Yeah, that's going in there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a channel with a crow? Ah, some musician guy. How dare they use your name? 
All right, we're going Admiral. Black and white television. Get out. Do you really? Right now you have that television? Sixty one was the first color tele color set? I thought it was before that. I think that's fifties color sets. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Super S O N R. Obviously, spell check is going. Oh wow, they didn't spell check that. That's crazy. S O N R nineteen. I think that's a nineteen inch. And we're going to put remote. Very cool. That exact model, huh? I know remotes were quite a novelty then. It was like a, a major luxury to have a remote control in television. Yep. It's a portable. Ah, that's a word I should use in there, actually. See the handle on the top? Portable. Hmm. Portable TV. Let's see if I can fit that. There we go. Portable TV. Fits perfectly again with no characters. I want to roll with that. I'll tell you. It doesn't always work out that perfectly. Switch this to TV. Not telephone, television. 12-inch set. This says 19. I don't know. Maybe I maybe that's just a number for marketing purposes. I thought maybe that was the uh, screen size. Let's see if we pull it up again. That's a nine, this specific one is a 19-inch TV. And just so you know, this was a $200. Yeah, I am. When it grow, two hundred bucks for this television in sixty one. That remote. Oh, Alnico speakers. Alnico is a great speaker brand for you musicians. I'm sure you know that. Wow. My Vox amplifier has Alnico speakers in it, from the sixties. So that's a great brand with speaker. That's something I probably should have put in too. There's only so much space though. It, I'm blowing this up so I can read it to everybody if you guys can't see. But if you look to the right of the remote control in the graphic, it says New Advance by Admiral Original 19 inch TV. Never before such luxury features <laughs> this, uh, in such a slim, portable television. Isn't it cool? Oh, this is called the Sportsman model, Winnicrow. It says shown the Sportsman model PS921. Super SNR 19 inch TV. Wow. Black and white. Automatic contrast restoration provides sharper blacks and true whites. And for the first time in any TV, a new miracle compactron tube. You see, if we had like three paragraphs we could write for a, for a title, I'd get all those words in there. Because there's probably somebody out there is like, oh my God, the first compactron tube. Really cool ad. Let's see. Well, that's what I have. Black and white port. We hit, I think, a lot of the keys. The fact that it's portable, it's black and white. The brand name, and it has a remote. I think we're good with that one. Oh, again, I missed. Shoot, 1961. All right, let her rip. All right. And here's what I do. I'm going to wrap it up now, but I'm just going to show you how I, how I do wrap it up again because I have this template built already. I did sell similar again, but I'm not actually going to list anything right now. I'm just going to take out those words that mean nothing, leave vintage print and the year, and erase out the picture. 
and then just save this as a draft. And now when I go back in, you can see my draft list for a bunch of items here, but I'll just go back in. I'll change this to L169 if I choose Life, Life Magazine next and go ahead with whatever the next issue is. But this is great. We were able to list uh, probably like about 15 ads or so since, what time did we go on? Six o'clock? <laughs> wow, this one went long. But it was a pleasure. I really enjoyed everybody's company. And um, I think I'm going to do this once in a while, a couple times a week anyway, right? It's a lot of fun. It's, uh, like I said, it's less lonely than listing alone. And I really appreciate everybody's feedback. You gave me some great, especially Winnicrow, Annie, uh, have been wonderful, Tracy, of course, and Eric. Sarah, I actually post an HTML link in my print ad so people can see all the ads from the catalog. Ooh, interesting. Thank you very much, Winnicrow. It has been fun. And kind of unique, right? Listing together like this with people. Really been, it's been fantastic. Yeah, we did. We got like 15 ads up with all this talking and discussion in between. That's pretty good. Very, very satisfied with that. We learned about pocket pens. I learned the term for the, what was that hat called? <laughs> I should, I forgot the name already. Not cardigan. The type of hat from uh, Scotty Dog. Very nice to hang out, Sarah. Thank you. I don't know if you've been on all the time. We, we started this at six o'clock. So we've been on for three hours already. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you for being a very, very big part of it. I really appreciate Tam, there you go, Winter Crow. <laughs> I'm going to look, I'm going to remember that one if I ever come across another one like that. Well, again, thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend, wonderful night, and new videos coming out probably this weekend, number five in that vintage print ad series. And we'll see what else I can come up with. I might even do another listing video, maybe Sunday. If you guys aren't doing anything, come and join me. All right. Have a great weekend. Thank you very, very much. And I will see you again.